on defense and will kick off. This is just the third time that the Tigers and Pirates have met on the gridiron. The Tigers have won easily in both games back in 85 and 86. Shutout in 1986. No big surprise that Auburn is going to open up on defense. It's what they choose to do most of the time, Randy. That's right, Andy. Uh, Auburn's won on defense as long as Wayne Hall's been here as a defensive coordinator. They feel very comfortable that, uh, that the defense can stop the team early, and, and they play for field position early in the game. So that's really the reason behind choosing to uh, defer to the second half. A big, big crowd on hand at Jordan Hare Stadium. They're expecting a crowd of close to 85,000. If Auburn goes over that 85,000 mark, this will be the largest crowd that East Carolina has ever played in front of. The previous high, just over 84,000 at Penn State a few years ago. Matt Hawkins will be kicking off for the Tigers. And Galloway is deep to receive. Mitchell Galloway deep to receive for East Carolina. And you look for East Carolina to be emotionally charged early in this game. It's a big game for them in front of a huge crowd. So they ought to really be very spirited in their play early in the game. And we're underway at Jordan Hare with the wind behind him. Galloway seven yards deep in the end zone. And East Carolina will open up at the 20 yard line. It'll be interesting to see if East Carolina will open up the game throwing the football. We've heard some rumors this week that they may get a shotgun formation to try to throw a short control passing game. So it'll be. Uh, interesting to see how they start this game. And Auburn opens up defensively with the nickelback, Fred Smith, on the field. First and 10 from the 20 for East Carolina. Marcus Crandall, the sixth leading passer, make that the seventh leading passer in East Carolina history. He has thrown for over 1,800 yards this year. On first and 10, two pass to the left sideline, incomplete. Pass intended for Larry Shannon. Defending on the play, Cornerback, Del McGee. Just as we expected, Andy, they start off with a three-step drop, try to gain five or six yards on first down so that gives them a little more flexibility on the second down, whether or not they want to try to go deep or, or run uh, maybe an outside running play. Jason Nichols checks in at wide receiver, replacing Larry Shannon, and he splits wide to the right. And Carolina will work out of the shotgun on second and ten. Pass complete to Allen Williams. A gain of about five. Dale McGee there to make the stop. So on the first two plays, they picked on Dale McGee. Offensive line, Kevin Wiggins, the center. Very versatile. He's played all over the place, including fullback this season. Crandall and Smith, a terrific backfield for East Carolina. A good set of receivers as well. A terrific defensive front for Auburn. They're all seniors. Whitehead, Pelton, Walker, and Etheridge. Harris, Miskin, and Mostella with a terrific backfield as well. They've returned several interceptions for touchdown. It's third and five at the 25 for East Carolina. Out of the shotgun, Crandall. Two steps back. Pass is complete across the 30-yard line. That will be a first down to Larry Shannon, Brian Robinson. The free safety for Auburn came up to make the stop, but it should be enough for the first down, although... The spot is a bit short. It sure is, Andy, and just as we expected, East Carolina's come out and attempted three short passes, and if they can continue to do that, um, they should be able to move the chains. It's just real hard. You have to be a very disciplined team to, to attack a, an Auburn defense that way. A gain of four on the play, and East Carolina will go for it deep in their own territory, just about a foot for the first down, and Marcus Crandall will call timeout. Auburn was ready for the fourth down in one play. Does it surprise you that this early in the game on the road at its own 29-yard line against a defense like Auburn, they would go for it on fourth and one? It really does. That, that surprises me on their own 30-yard line this early in the game. Auburn, again, is known as a great defensive football team. But their front four are very physical, very good against the run. Um, you know, I, I look for them to change their mind. It looks like they're doing just that. They came out and got a look at the Auburn defense and decided they would go ahead and put this one away. Matt Levine is the punter. He's a freshman from North Potomac, Maryland. He went to Walton High School. He averages just under 43 yards per punt. His longest is 58 against Tulsa. And Thomas Bailey will drop deep to receive for Auburn. He stands at his own 30. 
as a freshman, Thomas Bailey set the SEC record for return yardage in a season. It's good to have Thomas Bailey back for Auburn. I'm sure they're excited about getting him back in the game. Deep thigh bruise last week against Arkansas. He did return to the game, but did not return punts after that time. But he will return this one as he stands at his own 30. The last time Thomas returned a punt for a touchdown was against Ole Miss three years ago. So it's been a while for Thomas in the end zone as far as his punt returns are concerned. Auburn with a five-man front. Low end over end. Bailey at the 27. With some room. Midfield. Inside the 45-yard line. The punter, Matt Levine, coming up to make the stop on the play, along with Larry Shannon. But it puts Auburn in terrific field position for its first offensive play of the game. Sure does, Andy. Um, you can see Auburn's strategy pay off right there. They actually have the ball uh, on East Carolina side of the field. And again, uh, choosing to uh, defer to the second half pays off. They've got Frank Sanders into the bounty. Wouldn't surprise me if Auburn tried to go deep early in this game. First down and 10 from the 44. The pitch to Davis. Room to the 40-yard line, a gain of about four yards on the play. Dwight Henry out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, came up to make the stop for East Carolina. It will bring up second down and six for the Tigers. You saw Patrick Nix's numbers. Just under 1,500 yards passing on the season. Second and six for Auburn. The ball is at the East Carolina 40. Backs in the eye, the play clock down to five. Davis again, off left tackle. 35, on his feet to the 30 and stood up there, but enough for a first down for the Tigers. You can really see Stephen Davis's power. He's over 220 pound running back, and it's really hard to, for one person to tackle him. Just you can see here, Auburn's running the football into the boundary. Stephen Davis just runs over number 21. They have to gang tackle him. He's a very powerful runner. He ran over David Hart. Marvin Burke finally came up and made the big stick. Willie Gaucher and a wide receiver for Auburn replacing Thomas Bailey. First and 10 at the 30 for the Tigers on their initial drive. Davis this time tries the right side, and it'll be a loss. Mark, Le Mark Liviano making the stop on the play. A terrific offensive line that comes back. Everyone comes back for next season for the Tigers. Nick Davis and Frazier in the backfield. Sanders and Bailey, terrific receivers for the Tigers. Krejcik right in the middle of that defensive line for East Carolina. Liviano has mentioned the leading tackler for the Pirates. And twins. We'll see twins, Darren and David Hart, at times in the same in the game at the same time. A loss of three, second and 13. And another loss. Marvin Burke out of Jacksonville, Florida, stops Davis. A loss of about three on the play. The Tigers going backward here after gaining the first down. It looked like that uh, Marvin Burke actually blitzed on the snap and broke through the offensive line. East Carolina may be anticipating uh, another run there and trying to tackle Auburn for another loss, which they did. Burke is out. Another defensive back, David Crumby, is in. Third and 16 for Auburn at the 36. Nick's out of the gun. Plenty of time. In some trouble. Still looking. Sanders to the 25 and out of bounds at the 23. Still three yards shy of a first down. Dwight Henry making the stop. What time for Patrick Nix? Did you get that kind of time when you were the quarterback? Oh. <laughs> okay, you can see Patrick Nix here in the shotgun. He does have excellent protection right here. Obviously, East Carolina's doing a great job in the secondary covering Auburn's receivers because he has the time and can't find someone to throw to. Hits Frank Sanders late on the sideline, but not enough for the first down, and we'll see a field goal attempt here. Matt Hawkins from 39 yards out of the hole to Patrick Sullivan. Brian Brinsfield, the snapper. On the way. And good. 
So Auburn scores on its first drive. Got a great punt return from Thomas Bailey. The Tigers gain one first down, but the two running plays to Davis trying to go to the right side kind of stalled the drive for the Tigers. That's right, Andy. East Carolina, you'll probably see a lot of things on defense from East Carolina trying to break Auburn's rhythm in the running game. Either some outside blitzes or, as you saw, Marvin Burke blitzing from the inside. They're going to have to cause Auburn to have some negative plays, I believe, to uh, slow them down today. Again, Auburn glad to get points when they get in the red zone, and uh, the strategy of the kickoff uh, really pays off, and we've got a 3 nothing score. 10-39 remaining in the first quarter. Auburn on its initial drive, up 3 to nothing, thanks to the 39-yard field goal with the wind behind his back from Matt Hawkins, who gets set to kick off for the Tigers. Glad you've joined us on the Auburn Network, along with Randy Campbell. I'm Andy Bertram. We have Brian Bailey on the sidelines. Three-nothing Tigers. Mitchell Galloway deep to receive for East Carolina. He stands at his own three. Galloway from the three. And crunched at the 18-yard line with a flag down on the play. Harold Morrow came up to make the stop for Auburn. Got some help from Joe Frazier, but again, a flag on the play downfield. Andy Jamie Williams, number 13. Take a look at this hit. Right. Galloway will remember it for a while. I don't know if you can see on this uh, on the replay right here on the bottom of the pile. Jamie Williams took five blockers out uh, for East Carolina. He used to be a quarterback, Andy. The illegal block against East Carolina. Joe Frazier came up to make the stop. Joe Frazier, of course, was a nose guard out of high school. Led the team in rushing as... In his first year of eligibility here, moved to linebacker last year, back now at fullback, and he's always been a great special teams player. Very unselfish player. Very unselfish. East Carolina opens up deep in its own territory, first and ten from its own nine. Crandall under center. Our first look at Junior Smith. Nice through to the 14 before he stopped by Ken Albus. Albus, a freshman out of Demopolis. Auburn fans will remain, can, remain, remember Ken Alvis for his interception return against LSU. You can see Auburn, Auburn's pursuit. Junior Smith actually cuts back, gains a few yards. Nice lift there by Ken Alvis, the freshman. A gain of five, second down and five. The ball is marked at the 14. Complete on the left sideline. Jason Nichols makes the catch. Del McGee with the stop. About two yards shy of a first down. Auburn's defensive backs, Andy, are going to have to be careful not to get lulled to sleep with this three-step passing game. They're throwing the short ones, and you know sooner or later they're going to pump fake like that and throw it deep. He has the ability. He has the gun to go deep. Sure does. Third and two for East Carolina. He will pass. It's complete, and it will be a first down. The pass to Mitchell Galloway, Brian Robinson among the stoppers for the Tigers. You can see again the quick pass. Marcus Crandall going to Mitchell Galloway. He's their leading receiver for the 30 receptions this year, and a host of Auburn defenders there playing tight in the third and two situation. First and ten from the 22 for the Pirates. North Carolina's first first down of the day. Jackson and Crandall in the center. Junior Smith up the middle. Spins to the sideboard. Marcellus Mastella making the hit for Auburn. You see the left guard pulling here, trying to run some 
some type of trap play. There does look like there's a hole in there, and uh, Junior Smith's known for his hitting and spinning, and I'm sure if they keep creating those holes, he's going to find a seam in there. Gary Walker with a good job to stuff up the hole. A gain of three, second and seven. be another penalty against the Pirates instead of second and seven. It's going to be second down and 12 for East Carolina. Good game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the bound. The referee is Bill Goss. Umpire Butch Lambert. The linesman Bobby Towns. The line judge James Bing. The side judge is John Guani. Field judge William Stanton. Stan Murray, the back judge. The officials for today's game. Second and 12 for East Carolina at the 20. Crandall the pass. Floats it to Junior Smith. In some trouble. Spins away from one tackle, but not Fred Smith and a flag down. Andy, it looked like we might have a face mask call against Auburn's, uh, one of Auburn's defensive backs. Fred Smith will be called for the infraction. Uh, you can see they've been throwing the ball downfield short. Marcus Crandall does a good job getting the ball into their best Grabbing runner's the hands. Mass by the defense. Dale McGee's there to make the play. The the junior run, repeats an excellent, down. excellent player. Makes him miss, and there's uh, Fred Smith with that face mask. It's a five-yard face mask, as you heard Bill Goss mention. And so right back where we started, second down and seven. 7.34 to go, first quarter, 3 nothing Auburn. Carolina at its own 27. Shot clock at four as Crandall checks at the line. Fake, and he'll go long. And he'll throw it out of bounds. The pass was, I think, to Jason Nichols. Del McGee was defending. Was there a cross-up on the pattern? It looked like uh, to me that they, they pump-faked it and tried to roll out of the short pattern and go deep. I don't believe Marcus Crandall had enough time to plant his foot and throw the ball. Uh, Auburn's defensive front got a good pass rush that time, and that will be a key for East Carolina's offense. Can they protect the passer? You may see as the game moves along some play action and moving the pocket outside the hash marks to give him more time. Third and five, Crandall will work out of the shotgun. Rolling, throwing, incomplete. Fred Smith defending on the play. The pass intended for Derek Batson and the Tigers hold on defense. Okay, just as we mentioned, uh, Marcus Crandall rolling out to try to provide a little more time. Fred Smith making an excellent play. Uh, Fred's a, a really tough player, good leader, and good athlete. Matt Levine to punt. Bailey back at his own 33. Nice high spiral. Sends Bailey to the 28, where he fumbles. And the Tigers recover. So a break for Auburn. And it appeared that Bailey tried to field that off his shoulder pad. He sure did. This is very uncharacteristic of Thomas Bailey. He, the reason that they put him back there is because he's such an excellent receiver and always does the right thing on a punt return. Looks like he may have taken his eye off that ball. Auburn fortunate to get it back. The Tigers start from their own 27. Bailey and Sanders, the receivers, the backs are in the eye for quarterback Patrick Nix. Stephen Davis. To the 28-yard line, Darren Hart out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. His twin brother, David, also plays for East Carolina in the backfield, the defensive backfield. A gain of two, second and eight. 937 yards for Davis coming into today's game. He's hoping to go for 1,000 on the season against the Pirates today. 246 yards against Arkansas last week. Here comes the blitz. Mix to Sanders. A gain of about four. Emmanuel McDaniel out of Jonesboro, Georgia makes the stop. Andy, the interesting thing... 
East Carolina blitzing here from the outside. Really, Auburn's favorite play is a toss sweep. They know that. They've got to have a game plan to stop it and to stop Stephen Davis. And I believe uh, in the run situations, you're going to see some blitzes. Auburn just happened to have a pass called that time. A four-yard reception sets up third down and four for Auburn at its own 33. Frank Sanders, Auburn's go-to guy as far as receivers are concerned. Nick's out of the gun. Throws complete to Sanders, but it's going to be short of a first down. A host of pirate tacklers there. A gain of just three. Auburn needed four, and the Tigers will be forced to punt. Auburn, Auburn trying to throw the ball short across the middle and get it in Frank Sanders' hand so he can run for the first down. Excellent defense by East Carolina to be there to make the hit and stop Auburn short of that first down. All-American Terry Daniel to punt, averaging just about 46 yards per punt, as long as 62 this season. High, sending Galloway to the 18. And that's as far as he gets. Let's send it downstairs. Here's Brian Bailey. Okay, thanks, Andy. Big defensive stand for East Carolina that time. You know, sometimes you get in games like this and you just can't get any field position whatsoever. The Pirates were backed up. Did pick up at least one first down and got the good Matt Levine punt. Good defensive stand, and the Pirates still only trail three zip. Okay, Brian, thanks. First down and 10. The ball is at the 20-yard line for East Carolina. This man, Smith, in trouble. Shannon Suttle came up to make the initial stop for Auburn. Smith tried to string it out to the sideline. Toss sweep by East Carolina. Shannon Suttle does a great job playing off the block and making a, the tackle there. Marcellus Mostella not far behind. Auburn plays that swarming defense, likes to get a lot of people around the football. Of one second and 11 for the Pirates of East Carolina. 3 nothing Auburn in the first quarter. Crandall. Little or no game. Fred Smith makes the stop. The pass to Jason Nichols. And it will bring up third down and long again for East Carolina. East Carolina continuing to throw the control passing game with a quick screen here. Fred does a great job of uh, playing around the block and being there to make the tackle for the no game. Third and ten as we approach the four-minute mark of the first quarter. The draw to Smith to the 23. Mike Pelton there for Auburn. Brian Robinson also came up. And it will be punting time for East Carolina. Junior Smith really showing his balance. He gets hit here in the backfield, hit again and stays on his feet. Again, he's a, not a real big back, 5'6", 180, very strong and excellent balance. So Matt Levine punts for the third time today for East Carolina. His last was a 45-yarder. A good snap. Bailey at the 37. Head down across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Marvin Burke makes the stop for the Pirates. So good field position once again for Auburn. It sure is, Andy. Uh, Auburn's had good field position the entire first quarter. I know that Terry Bowden will be anxious to put some points on the board preferably in the form of a touchdown. Again, uh, we talked. It wouldn't surprise me to see Auburn try to go deep sometime during this drive. Sanders and Bailey split wide right and left. First and 10 from the 46 for the Tigers. Off the play action. Hicks to the full guy of the tight end Fuller. First down yardage to the 42. Darren Hart and David Hart. The Hart brothers making the stop. A gain of 16 for the Tigers and a first down. Gotcha. The play action pass holds the linebackers in, and Patrick Nix does a good job of getting the ball to Andy Fuller right over the linebackers' heads in the middle of the field for a nice game. Andy Fuller. 
Randy Fuller, seven catches, career high, 115 yards and a touchdown in the thrilling win over Florida last week. First and 10 from the 42. The back's in the eye. Nicks on the bootleg. Open Bailey to the 30, 20, out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Dwight Henry makes the stop. First and 10, Auburn inside the 15-yard line. What a great, what a great time for uh, Auburn to run this play. East Carolina blitzed, and Patrick Nix does a great job. His single coverage, and Thomas Bailey, the defender on him, was faked uh, by the run fake. Completely lost Thomas Bailey with a, a big game. Big good, play for Auburn. Good downfield blocking by his other wide receiver, Frank Sanders. First and 10, Auburn at the 13. Davis off tackle. To the 10, stood up there. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by author authority of rights granted to the Auburn Network, a division of Auburn Network Incorporated. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Auburn University and Auburn Network Incorporated. Davis carries for three, second down and seven for Auburn. Lily Gaucher wide right. On Goodson to the left. Davis up the middle. Burrowing down to about the seven yard line. David Hart with the stop with some help from Alfonso Collins. The Tigers inside the seven. Auburn, an excellent running team down in the red zone. Giving the ball to their best back, Stephen Davis. East Carolina is hanging tough on defense. It'll be interesting to see what we get here. Possibly a play action pass with uh, a third and a medium situation. Third and four. Here comes the blitz. Davis around right in. He's going to score. Touchdown. Excellent blocking by Auburn. Joe Frazier on the block there. You see Andy Fuller manhandling his his defensive end. Stephen Davis walks in untouched. You know, it's, I guess it's great coaching, Andy, when you give the ball to your best back in a crucial situation. He makes it happen. Hawkins to attempt the extra point. And it's 10-0 Auburn. And that replay showed outstanding blocking by everyone, including the backs, the line, and even the receivers in the end zone. That's true, Andy. Um, Auburn doing an excellent job right now. East Carolina blitzing some and, and Auburn making them pay. That's a, When you blitz teams on defense, it's, it's uh, either a big play for the defense or a big play for the offense, and it's kind of a do-or-die situation there. Let's send it downstairs to Brian Bailey. Brian? Okay, and you can see it wide open down here. The Pirates came with an inside blitz trying to shut off the inside run, and, and Stephen Davis just went right around the right side there, and just easy touchdown for the Tigers. Pirates got caught in the blitz and got burned by it. 10-0 Auburn. A 39-yard field goal from Matt Hawkins on Auburn's initial drive. The Tigers forced a punt on their second drive. And again, after a short punt by Matt Levine and a good punt return by Thomas Bailey, the Tigers take it in on a seven-yard TD run by Stephen Davis. One more time, five plays, 54 yards, two minutes and 10 seconds for the Tigers to go up 10-0. Mitchell Galloway deep to receive for East Carolina. He has a 97-yard kickoff return against Tulsa already this season. Hawkins to boot it. And it goes into the end zone. And that, Randy Campbell, is about as perfect as a kickoff as you're going to get. He put it in the end zone, and yet he put it in this corner of the field, which is what Auburn tries to do. 
They sure do, Andy. And a lot of times, I, I know that uh, people may get frustrated. They see the ball bounce out of bounds uh, before it gets to the end zone. Excellent kick that time, though, by Matt Hawkins. Uh, placed it perfectly in the corner. And Auburn holds East Carolina to the 20, which is uh, obviously a, a goal every week that the kickoff team has. Following the game, Charlie Trotman joins the coach of the Auburn Tigers, Terry Bowden, and then Paul Ellen for the first Alabama Bank scoreboard show. So stay with us on the Auburn Network for that. First and 10 from the 20 for East Carolina. Crandall to pass. The pass goes to Galloway. Chris Schelling there to make the stop for Auburn. And for the most part, Auburn has done a good job stuffing the little pass control there. They really have. Again, East Carolina here going to the short control passing game. It's going to be difficult for them to, to move the chains consistently from the 20-yard line all the way down for a score until they start throwing the ball upfield a little more. Chris Schelling was one of the players we spotlighted at the top of the broadcast. He is Auburn's most complete defensive back. Second down and seven at the 23. Junior Smith up the middle across the 25-yard line. Anthony Harris to make the stop for the Tigers. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Junior Smith on the run here. Again, Anthony Harris meeting him right in the hole. Um, Andy, offensive football teams generally try to gain their goal is to gain four yards on first down. Auburn's done a good job this first quarter of holding East Carolina to two and three yard gains. So the quarter comes to an end in a quick quarter at that. The Tigers leading it 10 to nothing. A 39-yard field goal on the first drive by Matt Hawkins and a seven-yard touchdown run on Auburn's last drive by Stephen Davis on homecoming on the Plains. Glad you joined us on the Auburn Network. There's Randy Campbell. I'm Andy Bertram. Brian Bailey on the sidelines. On a pretty day at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Third down and four when we start the second quarter for East Carolina at its own 26. A first quarter where the Tigers scored on two of its three drives, Randy. Both were set up by good punt returns from Thomas Bailey. That's true, Andy. East, East Carolina really needs to make some first downs on, on offense just if nothing more than to just gain some field position and get Auburn's offense backed up on their own end of the field. Um, every time Auburn gets the ball if they're at midfield or on the other side of the field it just gives them a, a big advantage in, in trying to score points. Third down and four for East Carolina. We start the second half with Auburn trailing. They're leading 10-0. Auburn football review and airs tomorrow in all Alabama markets on Sports South at 8 o'clock Central and on the Sunshine Network Wednesday at 6 o'clock Eastern. Third and four for the Pirates. Crandall back to pass. Throws. Williams open at the 37-yard line and a first down. Ken Alvis makes the stop, but not before a gain of a first down for East Carolina. Alan Williams on the receiving end of that pass, a gain of 11. This is a big play for East Carolina in this drive. Throwing the ball upfield. To have a receiver dragging across in front and throw it upfield for a big game, establish some field position, and again, uh, trying to get the ball up the field instead of some of the short passes, and I believe it's the way that they're going to be headed. Williams is wide open on the play. First and 10 from the 38. Crandall is going to go long. Intended for Shannon, who got behind Ken Albus, but over his head. Larry Shannon is 6'6", and he got behind the 6'3", Ken Albus, but the pass was simply too far, as Auburn bit on the play-action fake. They sure did, Andy. Um, Marcus Crandall, as you can see here, 8 for 12 in this game with 35 yards. Uh, with eight completions, 35 yards doesn't seem like a lot. In the previous games this year, they've really thrown the ball deep quite a bit and just attempted it there, had a guy open, and just barely overthrew him. Randall came into today's game with over 1,800 yards passing this season. Second and 10 for the Pirates. A lone man in the backfield. Junior Smith, play action. 
Hicks in the flat. Damon Wilson, the fullback. Out of bounds at the 40 or the 41 yard line. Fred Smith, who's been very active early on, came up to make the stop for Auburn. Okay, you can see again play action pass trying to hold Auburn's linebackers inside. Getting the ball out to the sideline for a nice gain there. Damon Wilson's sixth reception of the season. A gain of four, third down and six at the 42. Tight end switches now. Strong and wide or strong line to the right. Crandall, here comes the blitz. The pass is complete. First down, Nichols. To the 45-yard line of Auburn, Brian Robinson makes the stop. Nifty move by Jason Nichols. A gain of 13 and a first down for East Carolina. East Carolina loading up the line on the right side to sprint out. Nichols really puts a move on Chris Schelling here. Open field is a hard place to make a tackle. Nichols does a great job uh, making Schelling miss and gaining some extra yards. Good tackle there by Brian Robinson. First and 10 at the 45 for East Carolina. Crandall out of the shotgun. Looks, throws, complete to Galloway. Still on his feet. 35 to the 33, dragging Dell McGee. Another first down for East Carolina, a gain of 12. This is the same play that they threw for the first down back at the other end of the field. Galloway shows great extra effort uh, right here. Dale McGee's got his jersey, and he just won't go down. East Carolina's come to play. We understand that Alonzo Etheridge has bruised ribs, probably will be back in today's ballgame. Scott Stacy is in at that defensive end. Straight back, Crandall. Pass in and out of the hands of Nichols. Fred Smith, the closest, along with Del McGee, defending on the play. I spoke with Wayne Hall this morning, Andy. He told me that Marcus Crandall was one of the best quarterbacks that uh, Auburn will have faced this year. And as you can see, he's been on target all day long. East Carolina's offensive coordinator doing a great job of getting, the, getting him to throw the ball quickly and moving him out of the pocket to avoid the Auburn's uh, pass rush. From the Auburn 32, Crandall out of the shotgun. Intended for Williams, incomplete with a flag. Pass interference against Dell McGee. McGee right on the back that time of Allen Williams, and a little too close for comfort. see the interference, Randy. Okay, we may be able to see it here. It looked like it was a good call from, from where we're sitting. Dale McGee, you see the tail end of it. It looked like his left hand may have been on the receiver's back. That's what it would have to be. First and ten for East Carolina at the Auburn 21. Crandall with an audible at the line. Blake Clock at three. Junior Smith after a gain of three on the play. A host of Tiger tacklers, Chris Schelling, Gary Walker, Scott Stacy on the stop. A bunch of blue shirts, Randy. Yes, it sure was, Andy. Uh, Crandall changing the play at the line of scrimmage uh, to, the, to the run. Must have seen something out here that, it, that he didn't like. Using most of the clock, they've had one delay a game penalty already. I'm sure he's aware of, of the clock there. Junior Smith for the four-yard gain, second and six from the Auburn 17. Crandall to pass. The pass complete inside the 10-yard line. Del McGee makes the stop on Darren Batson along with Fred Smith defending for Auburn. A gain of nine and another first down for East Carolina. When you're an offensive coach, this is what you love to see is a quarterback 
on target on all these short passes and the receivers making all the all the catches, just playing throw and catch. Of course, it really frustrates you if you're a defensive coordinator. Darren Batson making the catch there for a first down, first and goal from the eight for the Pirates. Nichols in motion. Three-step drop. Pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. Either Shannon Suttle or Anthony Harris appeared to make the deflection. Or maybe Gary Walker. I believe Gary Walker was back in the backfield that time, Andy, and it uh, looked like Anthony Harris. The ball may have bounced off his, off his chest, as you first mentioned. Watch the deflection here, and it is Gary Walker. Gary Walker in the backfield there. Anthony Harris actually having a chance to intercept that ball. Second down and goal from the eight. Crandall under center. Play action. Rolling. In some trouble. In and out of the hands. Nearly intercepted by Brian Robinson. Willie Whitehead coming up to put pressure on the quarterback, Marcus Crandall. East Carolina utilizing the play action pass, trying to buy some more time for Marcus Crandall and get him outside where he can use his athletic ability. And you can see a little bit of that here. Avoids the sack and gets rid of the ball. Actually not a bad pass by him. Uh, Brian Robinson just makes a great play on defense for the Auburn Tigers. Robinson is Auburn's career leader for it. Interceptions turn into touchdowns. He has three. Third and goal from the eight. Crandall's numbers on the day. Throws. Touchdown! Larry Shannon with the touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown strike. Well, Shannon, I believe, is he the, he's the 6'6 wide receiver. Gives East Carolina Marcus Crandall a, a big target there on the slam on the goal line. Beats his man inside. Excellent play for East Carolina. Good execution. We got us a ball game, man. Chad Holcomb is 20 of 21 for point after attempts this year. And now 21 of 22. And East Carolina on a drive that started back in the first quarter methodically drives it downfield. And the Pirates are within three. 10-7 is the score. Auburn leads with 11.56 to go in the first half. But here's the touchdown, Crandall to Shannon. Crandall in the shotgun. Shannon beats his man inside. Excellent throw and excellent catch in traffic. In traffic. Ken Alvis was right there. It's hard to stop that play right there when you got a big man and he can get inside. And got his body in between himself and the defender, Ken Alvis, as we send it downstairs to Brian Bailey. Okay, Andy, that's exactly how the East Carolina passing game is supposed to work. You know, most teams hand the football off to a running back. Well, Steve Logan likes to throw those short passes. He says you usually don't fumble a handoff. He wants that short passing game to work so well that you don't drop a short pass. Also, Alonzo Etheridge with Auburn is out right now with bruised ribs. He is probable for the second half, but he has ice on those ribs right now. Okay, Brian, thank you. 11.56 to go in the first half. Terry Bowden, 18-0 as a head coach at Auburn. I guess he'll stay. The alumni will keep him for a while. I think you're right, Andy. Uh, Terry Brown's done just a fantastic job. Steve Logan, 5-3 and three this season, 12-18. and 18. In three years as the head coach of the Pirates. Welcome to kick off. Sanders too deep in the end zone. To the 21-yard line. Actually... Willie Gaucher with the reception. Four minutes and four seconds, 13 plays, 80 yards, capped off. A touchdown pass from Marcus Crandall to Larry Shannon of eight yards. And the Pirates are within three at 10 to 7. 11 47 remaining in the first half of play. First and 10, Auburn at its own 21. The Tigers have scored on two of their first three drives. in the eye. Dual wide receivers right for Knicks. Pitch to Davis. Hit in the backfield on a loss of one. Yeah. 
Darren Hart came up from his strong safety position to make the stop for East Carolina. He had 52 tackles coming into today's game. Darren Hart coming in, blitzing from the outside. Again, to stop Auburn's running game, East Carolina utilizing that blitz very well at this point in the game. He was defended well all the way around. Davis had nowhere to go. Nine carries, 22 yards in the day for Davis. Second and 11 for Auburn. Play action and a rollout for Nix. They'll keep it. Out of bounds at the 24. A gain of four for Auburn. B.J. Crane came up along with Lorenzo West to run Knicks out of bounds. Knicks has three touchdowns, 58 yards on the year, 26 attempts, mostly that quarterback keeper. East Carolina reading that play well. Patrick Knicks didn't have any choice except to run. The tight end was well covered. Third and seven from the 24 for Auburn. Slot man left, double wide receivers left. Here comes the blitz. Knicks. First down to Thomas Bailey. Emmanuel McDaniel runs Bailey out of bounds. Should be just enough for the first down. Bailey had a big day, of course, against Florida. Auburn in the shotgun. East Carolina blitzing one linebacker. And Patrick Nix releasing the ball very quickly. Thomas Bailey just enough for the first down. From the 32-yard line, the Tigers have it first and 10, sending Sanders wide right, Bailey wide left as you get an end zone view from Jordan-Hare Stadium. Knicks going long, Sanders wide open at the 30, a foot race to the end zone. Frank Sanders. And ECU fit on that play action fake. I sure did. You can see Patrick Nix here. Get, you saw someone right in his face. East Carolina ran a cross charge blitz that time. That type play, and it takes a long time to develop. I'm really uh, surprised that Auburn was able to get the ball off and hold him off of Patrick Nix that long on a play like that. Just a big, big play for Auburn. Matt Hawkins to attempt the extra point. Coming right at you. Carolina's touchdown drive with a short version of its own. Short in time, not in yardage. Capped off by a 68-yard strike from Patrick next to a wide-open Frank Sanders. And for Sanders on the season, his sixth touchdown pass. Ten minutes, 47 seconds remaining in the first half. And a game that had the potential for some fireworks. We've seen it early. 17-7 Auburn. How wide open is Frank Sanders here? There's the pump fake by Patrick Mix. You can see East Carolina defender right in his face. East Carolina's defenders really bit on the pump fake. Frank Sanders does a great job catching the ball and outrunning the defensive back for the touchdown. Mark Lebiano came up and almost made the sack and as we on mentioned, Patrick Nix. As we mentioned earlier, Andy, Auburn going deep early in the game. We felt like that uh, they would do that uh, two or th or five minutes into the second quarter, and we see them try to take advantage of it. Pat Nix to Frank Sanders, a magic combination in the Alabama game a year ago. And has been a magic combination on several times this season. Hawkins will kick off for Auburn. At the three. Galloway on the reverse. In some trouble. Nowhere to go. Shep sets the penny act. The stop on the play for Auburn was made by Daryl Riggins, one of Auburn's special teams stars. Riggins a little banged up as he comes off the field. East Carolina trying a gadget there on the kickoff return with the reverse, hoping to get a big play uh, after the Auburn touchdown. 
It didn't take Auburn long, did it? Just a minute nine, four plays, 79 yards. The Bolt, 68 yards. Nicks to Sanders. First and 10 from the 12. Junior Smith for about one or two. Mike Pelton came up to make the stop for Auburn. Also, and Andre Fuller there for the Tigers. 10 minutes, 22 seconds. The clock is conning. Auburn leading 17-7. Here's a handoff to Junior Smith. I believe that's Andre Miller in there making a good lick for a short game. Miller replacing Whitehead, a defensive end. Crandall back in some trouble. Throws complete to the 24-yard line to Allen Williams. And that will be enough for a first down for East Carolina. Otis Mounds defending for the Tigers. Now you can see right here why East Carolina's been throwing the short passing game. They drop back a little deeper this time. Auburn almost gets the sack. And Crandall gets rid of the ball at the last moment for, for a nice play for East Carolina. Ten-yard gain for East Carolina. First and ten at its own 24. Dual wide receivers left. Allen Williams, split wide right. Crandall out of the shotgun. The shuttle pass, Junior Smith to the 40, 45, and out of bounds at the 46. Brian Robinson getting help from Chris Schelling. A 22-yard gain for East Carolina and another first down. And here's a look at the shuttle pass. Auburn really trying to get a pass rush, lining up high and wide, coming hard. An excellent call by East Carolina's offensive coordinator. Junior Smith again showing his balance and, and uh, agility there. First and 10, East Carolina at its own 47. Hand off to Jarris McPhail. Marcellus Mostella comes up to make the stop. Anthony Harris also there for Auburn. A gain of one, second and nine. Jarris McPhail. Doesn't get that many tries. The bulk of the carries for East Carolina, of course, go to Junior Smith. And Junior is back in the backfield. McFerris takes his seat on the bench. Galloway, slot left. And movement by the East Carolina line. This will send the Pirates back five yards. As we go downstairs, Bill Goss. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard loss on the play. Second down and uh, 14. Actually, five-yard loss on the penalty. Shannon at 6'6", six, six and Galloway at 5'10", wide left. Slot man right, second and 14. Crandall in trouble. Mike with the stop of flag on the play. If it holds, it will be Pelton's ninth sack on the season. Auburn's defensive front is just so strong, Andy. Mike Pelton having a great year. The penalty is against East Carolina. Auburn will decline it. Watch the surge this time by Pelton. Crandall's back to pass. Can't get it off quick enough. Pelton beats his man in the backfield for the sack. Beat the right guard, Terry Tillman. On the offense. Henry's declined. Third down. Third down and 22 now for East Carolina. Scott Stacy ended a defensive end for Auburn, replacing Shannon Suttle. Stacy is a rush defensive end, much like Ace Atkins was for the Tigers last year. Third and a bunch for Carolina. the shotgun. Hand off Junior Smith. 45 bounces outside midfield. And he got close to the first down and I believe he got it. Brian Robinson made the stop. The handoff, the draw out of the shotgun and it should be enough for a first down. 
Here's the draw play. Marcus Crandall to Junior Smith. Wayne Hall's going to be disappointed in his, in his defense for giving up uh, a first down in this third and long situation. Looked like Auburn may have been fooled thinking it was going to be a pass. They walked up to fake the blitz, backed out of it. Junior Smith shows his excellent, excellent athletic ability on that play. Mike Pelton had a shot at the line to make the play, and, or excuse me, Willie Whitehead couldn't make it. First and 10 at the Auburn, 42, a gain of 23 on the play. McPhail again for nine yards before he's forced out of bounds by Chris Schelling and Gary Walker. East Carolina effective in this drive, running the football. Auburn missing some tackles. Darrell Riggins there. Gary Walker makes the tackle on the sideline. Schelling with a big hit. McPhail made the miss on a couple of them. That's true, Randy. <laughs> Second and one. Hand off McPhail for a first down inside the 30. Jason Miska there to make the stop for Auburn. All week long, we felt like this was going to be a, a big game. East Carolina having an excellent year, and they're showing Auburn that they've come here to play, and uh, they're doing what, everything they can to win this football game. They didn't come here just to play good, Andy. They came here to win. Strong safety Ken Alvis came off the field. As you look at Steve Logan, the East Carolina coach, Alvis out. Charles Rose is in there at the strong safety. Alvis a bit bummed up. First and 10 from the 29. Crandall to Shannon to the 21-yard line. Fred Smith makes the stop for Auburn, but not before a gain of about eight on the play on first down for East Carolina. From the end zone camera. What Auburn would like to do when they give up these three and four yard passes, they, they need to make the tackle. And Dale McGee missing the, missing the tackle should have just been a three or four yard gain. And Shannon at 6'6 six, six out of Stark, Florida. Second and two for East Carolina. Junior Smith for a first down to the 16-yard line. Otis Mounds coming up from his strong safety position to make the stop. But it's another first down for East Carolina, a gain of five. First and 10, the Auburn 16. First and 10 from the Auburn 16-yard line. Crandall again handing off to Junior Smith. The cutback makes one miss. Otis Mounds finally brings it down after a first down game. From the 16, East Carolina. Crandall to pass. Nichols to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown! East Carolina, Jason Nichols. 16 yards for the Pirates. and forth we go. You see the pass out here to Nichols. You should see a real good block by number 80, Larry Shannon. Right there it is. Nichols sidesteps the sideline there, gets in the end zone, but excellent, excellent block by uh, Larry Shannon. Chad Holcomb to attempt the extra point. And we're back to a three-point game. 17 to 14, Auburn. Take another look at this block by Shannon. A little flat route to the sideline. Nichols make, does a good job of using his blocker. Shannon coming into the screen here with the block on Otis Mounds. Almost stepped out of bounds. It looked like Dale McGee thought he did step out of bounds. He kind of stopped on that play. Let's send it downstairs with Brian Bailey. You guys are right. It was a crushing block by Larry Shannon, which sprung the touchdown run. But the key, it may have been a pass that scored the touchdown, but the key to the drive was the running game led by Junior Smith. Not a lot of people know about little Junior Smith, but he is the all-time leading rusher in East Carolina history. He is some kind of back, and he is causing this Auburn team some problems right now. Ryan, they know about Junior Smith now. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> If they didn't know about him coming in, they're aware of Junior Smith now. I'm sure Wayne Hall knew about it. 
There's no question. Junior Smith already the all-time leading rusher, as Brian mentioned, and well on his way to his third straight 1,000-yard rushing season at East Carolina. Thomas Bailey, nearest to you, Willie Gaucher. Stands at the one for Auburn. Chad Holcomb to kick off for East Carolina. Go Shane will down it. Rightly so. So. Four minutes and 52 seconds, 12 plays and 88 yards, and East Carolina, Randy, mixed up that drive very well. They sure did. They, they mixed the run and the pass. Uh, as Brian said, Junior Smith showing his outstanding running ability, and Auburn uh, missing a few tackles on that last drive. And East Carolina has really come to play. An injured Auburn player, Eric Rebels, out of Homewood, Alabama, is the injured Auburn player. Rebels, a special teams player for the Tigers, He's listed as an outside linebacker. He was injured last year in the Georgia game at Athens. He missed uh, the Alabama game as a result. It appears to be that left leg. From the 20 for the Tigers, Gaucher wide right, Goodson wide left. Backs in the eye behind Patrick Nix. Pitch to Davis. Outside, 25. On his feet to the 29. Emmanuel McDaniel comes up to make the stop for East Carolina, but not before a gain of nine on the play. Mark Libiano also coming up for East Carolina to assist. Don't forget Audacity Products. Available Parisian stores statewide. Your lapel pins, T-shirts, the Victory Over Auburn shirts. Or call 1-800-AUB-1994. You should have your Audacity collection. Andy Stephen Davis ran right over Dwight Henry on that last play. East Carolina's free safety. 31 yards on the day for Stephen Davis. Showing his power. On second and short, Patrick Nix for the first down across the 30. Good search from the middle three of that Auburn offensive line. Shannon Robique, the center. Jason Taylor, the right guard, or the one of the guards, and Leonard Thomas, the other. And the good news for Auburn fans is that entire offensive line for the Tigers comes back next year. That's true, Andy. And Rick Trickett has done an outstanding job with Auburn's offensive line uh, since he's been here. Came here two years ago with Terry Bowden. Was at Mississippi State. Excellent offensive line coach. First and ten from the 32 for Auburn. Next with time. In trouble. Is the ball loose? Marvin Burke made the hit from the blind side on Patrick Nix. Del or Delton Cotton came up with the ball, but it remains Auburn football. Auburn a loss of seven. Auburn trying to go deep again. You can see this play takes a long time to develop. Patrick Nix pump fake to let Frank Sanders get by the defender. It just takes too long when East Carolina is blitzing like that. Second and 17 for the Tigers. Nix out of the shotgun. Four minutes to go in the first half. Here comes the blitz. Pass to Morrow. Broken up nicely by E.J. Gunther. Out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. A six-yard loss. And Auburn finds itself inside its own 20. Patrick Nix under pressure. Getting the ball dumped off to Harold Morrow. Again, East Carolina making a great defensive play. I think it would be an understatement to say that East Carolina was playing inspired football right now. Gunthrop got behind Auburn's guard, Leonard Thomas, on that play. Third and 23. Auburn leads 17-14. Final three minutes of the first half. Pitch to Stephen Davis with blocking. Outside to the 30. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. Emmanuel McDaniel came up to make the stop. Auburn's still 10 yards shy and will be forced to punt. A 12-yard gain for Davis on the play. 
Auburn going back to his bread and butter in the running game. Toss sweep to Stephen Davis. Had a long, long way to go for the first down, hoping that maybe Stephen could get past the line of scrimmage and, and make a long run. Comes close to doing that. Good play by uh, Emmanuel McDaniel. Bought off the block of Frank Sanders. Daniel, a punt for Auburn. Fair catch at the 33 for East Carolina. Morris Foreman, a linebacker, returns punts for the Pirates. For those of you in North Carolina, maybe that's nothing new. And East Carolina came close to blocking this punt. They sure did, Andy. Uh, Terry Daniel does a good job getting the ball off. You can see the East Carolina defense coming through right at the last minute. So Auburn's defense called on to hold here. First and 10 at the 34 for East Carolina. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. 17-14 Auburn. Crandall goes long. Williams wide open and overthrown by six yards. Dell McGee was beaten badly. Fortunately, so was Allen Williams, the receiver. The pass was at least six yards over his head. Andy, you could see Ken Alvis, Fred Smith, and Dale McGee talking to each other after that play. I believe that it was a busted coverage. It, it had to be for him to get that open. Someone, uh, one of those three defensive backs was supposed to be deep and, and uh, didn't carry out his responsibility. Crandall already over 130 yards passing on the day. Second and ten. Junior Smith to the outside. Stacked up at the 45-yard line. Del McGee, Andre Miller, Anthony Harris for the stop for Auburn. Hand off to Junior Smith. He bounces it outside because of Auburn's pressure inside. Anthony Harris in pursuit. Otis Miles looks like he tries to tear his head off right there. But just missed a little. Auburn's had a couple of those high tackles this yeah. afternoon. One of them cost him a five-yard face mask penalty. Third and three. The Auburn fans make some noise for their defense. Crandall in trouble. Looks, throws, intercepted Fred Smith. And down at the 10, Junior Smith makes the tackle on Fred Smith. Once again, the secondary comes through. Here's a look at Auburn's 17th interception on the season. Marcus Crandall in trouble, looking for a receiver, throws it back inside. I know he wishes he, had to, he had, could get that ball back. And how many times can Auburn secondary come up with a big play? Auburn and East Carolina both live off uh, the turnovers. They're both tied for fourth in the nation in turnover ratio. Auburn getting the first turnover of this football game. That's the fourth interception of the year for Smith. First and nine for Auburn. Stephen Davis. Cuts it inside the 10. Mark Liviano, the leading tackler for the Pirates, makes the stop on the play with some help from Darren Hart. It's a gain of one, second down and nine. Andy, the team with the fewest turnovers 90% of the time wins the game, and Auburn drawing first blood in that category is, is huge at this point in this game. Second and nine from the nine. Here's the blitz. Nick's in trouble. An incomplete pass. Mark Liviano in Patrick Nix's face, and a howdy do afterward. Nix does well to get rid of this ball, Randy. He sure does. Uh, great, great pressure by East Carolina. I think, though, Patrick Nix probably would like to have not thrown that ball. He did uh, last week. He had that same situation against Arkansas. Went for a touchdown the other way. And uh, I know Patrick, uh, he's a very heady player. And Norman makes all the right decisions. Third and nine, Auburn has four receivers in the lineup. Nix, incomplete. 
intended for Willie Gaucher. David Crumby making the defensive play. Patrick Nix extremely upset after this play. Good defense by East Carolina. Yeah, the receiver was covered. Again, you can see pressure by East Carolina's front. And it brings up the field goal situation for Matt Hawkins. Check out that guy. 26 yard attempt for Hawkins out of the hold of Sullivan. The snap from Brinsfield. And it's good. So Hawkins is two of two on the day. And Auburn takes advantage of the Fred Smith interception and return. And goes up by 6, 20 to 14 Auburn with a minute four remaining in the first half of play. I'm sure Terry Bowden would, would rather have had a touchdown after that turnover. I guess Florida, Auburn had... Logan talking to his defensive troops on the sideline. Steve Logan, 5-3 and three this season, 12-18 and 18 on the career. And there you see Terry Bowden patrolling the sidelines for Auburn. How would you like to hold his uh, mic cord? Terry yeah, never stands still. It would be a tough job. You get a workout, that's for sure. Auburn up 20-14, to 14, a minute four to go. And that drive set up by the 31-yard interception returned by Fred Smith. Junior Smith made a touchdown-saving tackle, by the way. That was six if Junior Smith doesn't tackle Fred Smith. Matt Hawkins will kick off. Mitchell Galloway, deep to receive for East Carolina. Hawkins takes it to the sideline and out of bounds. And that penalty will give East Carolina the ball first and 10 at its own 35-yard line. Plenty of time, a minute 40 to go in the first half with this offense. And Marcus Crandall, Jr., Smith, and the like. There's plenty of time for this offense to put some points on the board. It is, Andy, and I look for, for them to call plays to move the ball down the field. A uh, minute four left. They have two timeouts left. Plenty of time to at least get in field goal range. Illegal procedure in East, or illegal procedure against Auburn, actually. So the Tigers will kick it again. Galloway is the deep man for East Carolina. Emmanuel McDaniel is the up man. There's Galloway, a 97-yard touchdown off of a kickoff return against Tulsa at Tulsa this year. Matt Hawkins will try it again, this time kicking from his own 30. One minute and four seconds to go in the first half. Galloway from the six. Fakes the reverse. Galloway run out of bounds by Harold Morrow at the 25. That's an unusual situation when a penalty helps you, but uh, Auburn called for the penalty, and East Carolina now has the ball back on the 25 instead of the 35. East Carolina really wanted to try the fake reverse. They did. From the 25, East Carolina, 59 seconds to work with. Shannon goes wide left. Junior Smith with some room to the 40. Behind the blocking and Shannon. Out of bounds and stopping the clock at the 44-yard line. Ken Alvis makes the stop. A gain of 19 for East Carolina. Here's a handoff. There's a huge hole on the back side. East Carolina doing a great job. The left guard, Jamie Gray, and left tackle, Ken Carroll, opening the way for Junior Smith for a big game. Not tough to see why this guy's on his way to his third straight 1,000-yard seat. Crandall across the middle to the tight end. Sean Richardson inside Auburn territory down to the 45-yard line. Fred Smith makes the play. Stops the clock momentarily with 44 seconds to go in the half. At the 45-yard line of Auburn, and Carolina goes right back to the line of scrimmage. 
the shotgun, Crandall. Throws in and out of the hand of Jason Nichols. Dell McGee defending for Auburn. Stops the clock with 36 seconds to go in the first half. Chad Holcomb is the place kicker for East Carolina. Just note, his longest field goal of the year is 42 yards against Temple. Randall was on the money with that last pass, just a, a drop by his receiver. Allen Williams, Galloway to the right, Nichols wide left, fake handoff, Randall, complete to the backup tight end, Scott Richards. Otis Mounds makes the stop. The ball marked at Auburn's 29-yard line. seconds to go in the half. Richards did not play against Virginia Tech with a torn abdominal muscle. Thus, Richardson has started since then. You see the play action fake. Marcus Crandall hitting Richards across the middle. He's a big target. 6'5", 241 pound sophomore. Brings the ball in. Otis Mounds right there to make the play. Timeout on the field. A minute 28 to go. Excuse me, 29 seconds remaining in the first half. Steve Logan brings his troops to the sideline. Brian Bana will try to talk to that man, Steve Logan, as soon as the half is over. But he has to feel good about his ball club down by six in driving here at the end of the first half against the number three ranked team in the country. That's right, Andy. They've come in here and, and been able to execute their offense very well. Uh, held Auburn to uh, two field goals in, in one situation, especially after the turnover when Auburn surely would, would like to have uh, gotten a touchdown down that close. East Carolina's played an outstanding football game. Terry Bowden right now pacing the sidelines, hoping his defense can hold, at worst, a field goal. Well, I can't think of anyone I would rather have coaching my defense than Wayne Hall in a situation like this. Auburn's defensive coordinator. First and 10 at the 28. For Marcus Crandall out of the shotgun. Throwing into the end zone, Shannon intercepted on the play. Ken Alvis, outstanding. His third interception of the season. And another drive comes to a halt as a result of the Auburn secondary. Here's the pass by Crandall. Looks like a, a great pass right on target. Shannon just can't pull it in. Alvis right there to make the play. And Andy, I believe Alvis got hurt on that play. He came to the sideline and went straight to the trainer. Great concentration by Ken Alvis. Looks like he landed on the ball. Maybe hopefully he just got the breath knocked out of him. Well, he was injured a little bit earlier in the first half. And Auburn will sit on it here, we think, with 22 seconds to go. First and 10 from the 20. Nix takes an eight. East Carolina won't stop the clock. And Auburn on a homecoming takes it to halftime. Leading by six, 20 to 14. Two Matt Hawkins field goal. One at 39, one at 26 yards is the difference in a very entertaining first half of play. Now the teams have run off the field. The officials are still on the field. They've got to start the clock up and now they will. As the seconds tick away and the first half is officially over. So Auburn leads 20 to 14. And while the Tigers moved the ball on offense, so did East Carolina. So the Pirates have to feel good about their chances. Let's go downstairs, Brian Bailey. Okay, thanks so much, Andy. Coach Logan on the sidelines, 20 to 14. A couple of key interceptions near the end of the second quarter really hurts. But you got to really like your defensive play after the first interception there. Yeah, it was a big stand for us. It really did more for us than it did them, to be honest with you. I think right now our kids think they can win this football game. That's a shame down there. We hit the kid on the post route with a perfect throw, and, uh, you know, we had a chance to go in 21-20. But we'll come back and play hard second half. That's all we know how to do. What's the key in the second half defensively to stopping the run still? Yeah, you know, we told our kids just stop at number 48 and make them beat us throwing the ball. And if they do that, they'll beat us left-handed, and then you just tip your hat and go on. But we got to stop that big tailback. Okay, Coach, best of luck in the second half. Auburn 20, East Carolina 14. That's Steve Logan. 
Ryan, thank you very much. He brings up a good point. As the Tigers knew coming into the game, they were going to try and have to establish the run. For the most part, East Carolina did a pretty good job against Stephen Davis, with the exception of a couple long runs. But the Tigers primarily do their damage through the air in the That's first true, half. That's true, Randy. Steve Logan, uh, coach for East Carolina, is right on target. Uh, if they can stop Auburn's running game, they have a, a much better chance of winning this football game. Uh, Auburn is a very strong running game. And as, as Terry Bowden said this week, uh, one of the reasons that they've been able to win games is because they're running attack inside the red zone. When they get close, they're, they're a good running team, and it really helps them in that end of the field, whereas a team that throws the ball a lot, when they get down to inside the 15-10 uh, yard line, the field shrinks, the defensive backs can play tighter, and it just makes it a lot harder for those type teams to score. Tigers lead it 20-14 to 14 on the afternoon. An entertaining first half to be sure, Randy, uh, for the Tigers and really for the homecoming fans. Auburn knew this could be a game where the teams would come out and put some points on the board, and East Carolina showed that it would do that in this first half, and, and there's certainly no intimidation at all by the Pirates in the first half of play. That's true. They've come here to play inspired football. They've played an excellent game so far. I'm sure that uh, Coach Logan going in at halftime is just going to tell his kids, hey, just keep doing the same things that you're doing, and let's just don't turn the ball over. They've turned it over twice, and I'm sure their defense will continue in the second half to bring pressure. Homecoming on the Auburn University campus. It's going to be an extended halftime show as we send it back downstairs again to Brian Bailey. Brian? Okay, the Pirates right in the football game. That's exactly where they wanted to be, down 20-14. to 14. This East Carolina team has had some close losses this year. I think that's going to be a key in the second half. If they can figure that they can win this football game, they go ahead and take advantage of some mistakes in the second half. In the first half, though, it was East Carolina that made the key mistakes. You talk about the uh, the tough losses, to be sure. All three of the losses thus far are to teams that are currently ranked in the top 25, and they were close. They lost on opening day to Duke, 13-10. to Lost to 21-18 to to Syracuse. And lost to Virginia Tech, 27-20. to Auburn and East Carolina in today's game. As we take a look at both schools, the Auburn time on the Auburn University campus, you're seeing the homecoming queen and her court accompanied by the Greater Auburn Marching Band. on the move, whether it's coming out of the locker room or pacing the sidelines, and his team currently leads 20 to 14 as we take a look at the first half statistics. And East Carolina owns a lot of these statistics, friends. Twice as many first downs on the day. More yards rushing, passing, and that all-important time of possession, Randy. Right, the one thing that Auburn has done well in the first half, they haven't turned the ball over. East Carolina with the two turnovers or, or our score could be uh, the other way around. 
could be East Carolina 21 and Auburn about 17. Um, that's, that's a major, major uh, factor in this first half of the two turnovers. Junior Smith, 72 yards rushing in the first half. Auburn Stephen Davis with 44 yards rushing. Both quarterbacks perform well. Marcus Crandall, 19 of 30. For 166 yards, two touchdown passes, also two interceptions, and they were costly. Auburn's Patrick Nix, 8 of 10, 131 yards, and a touchdown pass to Frank Sanders. Auburn will open up on offense in the second half as we take a look at the scoring in the first half of play. Matt Hawkins, a 39-yard field goal, opened things up with 10.39 to go in the first half. Tigers took a 10 to nothing lead. Two drives later, with a minute to go in the first half, Stephen Davis rumbles in from seven. Great downfield blocking by Auburn. Five plays, 54 yards. East Carolina came back in the second half, though. Crandall to Shannon for a touchdown pass of eight yards. I made the score 10 to seven, Chad Holcomb's extra point. On the next drive, though, Auburn went deep. The combination of Patrick Nix, Frank Sanders. 68-yard touchdown pass. Matt Hawkins' extra point gave Auburn a 10-point lead. 17-7. East Carolina came right back, though. 16-yard pass and run. Jason Nichols with a great downfield block from Larry Shannon. That made it 17-14. Matt Hawkins' extra field goal with 104 to go in the first half. Gave Auburn its six-point lead as Holcomb puts it into the end zone. Gauchet downs it there, and it will be first and 10 Auburn at its own 20-yard line. Twi Let's take a look at scores from the SEC. Mississippi State taking a 14-7 lead in the third quarter over Arkansas. Florida big at halftime, no big surprise, over Southern Mississippi. And Vanderbilt, 16-0 at Kentucky in the third. Memphis, a team that is playing for a Liberty Bowl bid, just as is East Carolina trailing Olds. Across the middle, Fuller, first down at the 32-yard line. Matt Liviano, Dwight Henry making the stop. Mark Liviano, excuse me. A 12-yard gain and a first down for the Tigers. Right over the middle to Andy Fuller. Good play action fake by Patrick Nix. Andy Fuller open, makes a great catch there. Juggled it just a little and came down with it. East Carolina defenders really close. Gauthier to the top of the screen. Goodson to the bottom on first and 10 from the 33. Patrick Nix now 9 of 11 on the day. Stephen Davis trying to find some room. None there with the flag down. Mark Leviano makes the stop for East Carolina on a penalty play. For the most part, East Carolina has done a good job of stopping the Auburn running game today, holding against East Carolina. In the first half, Auburn was held to 43 yards rushing. Holding on the offense. Penalties 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. The fourth penalty against Auburn today. So it will be first down and 20 for the Tigers at their own 23. Sanders replaces Gaucher at wide receiver. Jesse McCovery is in at tight end. Shot clock at, or game clock at one. Nick straight back. Throws across the middle, incomplete. That was intended for Andy Fuller. Dwight Henry nearly came up with the interception. And it brings up second down in 20. Play action zone. again here by Auburn. Patrick Nix looking for Andy Fuller again over the middle. It's an excellent defensive play there by Dwight Henry. Free safety for East Carolina. It's a big series for East Carolina. Pick and hold Auburn and get his hands on the football, a chance to take the lead. 
Opening series, second half. 14.01 to go, third quarter. Auburn leads 20 to 14. Second and 20. Fake handoff. Nix. Intended for Fuller incomplete. Liviano and uh, Darren Hart defending on the play. And it brings up third down and 20 for the Tigers. A good example just how costly these penalties can be. And East Carolina continues to blitz linebackers inside. All they have to use their backs to pick up and help in protection. Third and 20 for Auburn. The play clock running down. Nicks goes deep for Sanders. Out of bounds and incomplete at the 43. Dwight Henry defending on the play, and Auburn will be forced to punt. And the Pirates hold on their first defensive stand of the day, of the quarter. Sanders was open momentarily. The pass was a bit short. Frank had to come back to the ball. Terry Daniel to punt. Morris Foreman set to receive it from the 36. Across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Let's send it downstairs. Brian Bailey with the special guest. Brian? Look okay, Annie here on the sideline. A familiar face for East Carolina and for Auburn fans. Hal Baird and Hal. we got a great ball game between East Carolina and Auburn, don't we? I tell you, it's really an excellent ball game. Two well-coached teams and two really good offenses. And it's been up and down the field. It's like a track meet. It's been fun to watch. Graduate of East Carolina. You coach at East Carolina now at Auburn. And you're in the East Carolina Hall of Fame. Well, that was a great thrill for me. One I'll never forget. And it was terrific getting back to Greenville. And, and uh, you know, I just really can't express how much I, I appreciated that. And it was super to see a lot of folks. I hadn't seen in a long time. Really great experience. I'm always on the lookout for a great sports tie. How about this? Baseball action at its best from your mother-in-law. You know, you have to you have to indulge those mother-in-laws and they give you something to wear. You have to do it. In this case, it ended up being all right. <laughs> great looking tie, Coach. Thanks very much. Hal Baird on the sideline. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Hal Baird has done a terrific job with the baseball program at Auburn. Of course, the administration in the process of building a new stadium or renovating the stadium at uh, Plainsman Park. It will be ready for the the 1996 baseball season. Andy, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments Auburn makes on defense. Uh, East Carolina very potent on offense in the first half. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Wayne Hall uh, had, a, had a talk with his players to inspire them and maybe make a few changes on defense and strategy. Good field position for East Carolina to open it up. First and 10 at the 43. Pitch to Junior Smith, fakes a reverse. Up the left sideline, Smith with room after an eight-yard game. Fred Smith makes the stop for Auburn, but not after Junior Smith gets eight for East Carolina. East Carolina utilizing the fake on the reverse to slow down Auburn's linebackers and, and their pursuit. Again, Mostella overruns the play, another missed tackle. Fred Smith finally drives him out of bounds. Seems like the story of this game for Auburn's defense as far as being missed tackles. Isn't it? East Carolina running to the side that used to be Alonzo Etheridge. He was hurt in the first half, bruised uh, ribs as East Carolina calls timeout. Alonzo has not returned since the first half. Shannon Suttle has been playing on the running downs, Scott Stacy on the passing downs, and East Carolina has gone to the hole that has been vacated by Alonzo Etheridge. It will be second down and one. The ball is at the 47-yard line for East Carolina. Trailing Auburn, 20 to 14. Homecoming at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Andy, I see Ken Alvis standing on the sideline with his helmet off also. Otis Mounds in his place. Yeah, we haven't we haven't heard yet, but uh, came off the field after that interception at the end of the second quarter. It looked like he was injured. Steve Logan's troops play host to Central Florida on the 12th and then to Memphis in a game that many figure will decide at least one of the berths in the Liberty Bowl. A win today would be huge for the Pirates, not only for their program, but would certainly give them a leg up in search of that Liberty Bowl bid. They're part of an independent alliance. It also features 
Southern Mississippi, Memphis, East Carolina, among others. And right now, the two teams that are vying for that spot in the Liberty Bowl are these Pirates and Memphis. Second and one at the Auburn 47. Fake the pass, or fake the handoff. It's the pass to Richards. First down to the Auburn 40-yard line. Fred Smith again on the stop. Scott Richards, 6'5", 241, a sophomore out of North Augusta, South Carolina, with the first down reception. East Carolina with good protection. Very effective in the short passing game. Enough to pick up the first down. They're, they're extremely well coached throwing and passing the ball in this short passing game. First and 10 from the Auburn 40. East Carolina trails by six. Junior Smith, off right tackle, about a two yard gain. Mike Pelton and Anthony Harris there for Auburn. And that's one of the shorter gains that we've seen from Junior Smith in a while. Let's take a look. Junior Smith with the ball. Many people think Auburn's defensive front this year is, is as good as some of the uh, defensive fronts from the past. Maybe the 83 team with Donna Hampton, Doug Smith, and, and the 88-89 uh, teams. Fred Smith, by the way, came off the field injured. Clarence Rose in. It's defensive back for Auburn on that last play. Crandall to throw on second and seven. In and out of the hands of Jason Nichols. Chris Schelling in Nichols' back pocket. Marcellus Mostella was also there. And it brings up a third down and seven situation for East Carolina. Crandall again on target. Nichols has had a two or three situations in the game where he's had an opportunity to catch a ball and doesn't use his hands, lets it hit his pads and bounce off. Williams and Galloway to the left. Nichols to the right. Third and seven. Crandall goes deep. Nichols open and over his head. Jason Nichols had Chris Schelling beat. And Crandall, for the second time today, put it over the open man's head. This would be, if, it, if East Carolina would elected to do so, would be a field goal of about 54 yards. The longest for Chad Holcomb this year is 42. Auburn dodges another bullet. They've had East Carolina's had receivers open, I believe, four times deep in the game, and finals overthrown three, and then one should have been caught for a touchdown and ended up in an Auburn interception. The Pirates will go to it on fourth down, and they're running out of time. And they ran out of time. Or did they get the timeout in time? A flag is down. That's going to be delay of game against East Carolina, and now the Pirates will be forced to punt. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Fourth penalty on the afternoon. 25 yards for East Carolina. Anthony Harris is in the defensive huddle trying to fire up that Auburn defense. Matt Levine to punt. Thomas Bailey stands at his own 10. Good punt by Levine. Bailey with the fair catch. At the Auburn 6. Couldn't ask for a better punt than that for Matt Levine. Gets the ball inside Auburn's 10-yard line. And give credit to Bailey. If he doesn't catch it, it's probably inside the five. That's right. That ball was very high. Probably would have bounced straight up. Uh, typically, the receivers won't feel the ball when they back up inside the ten. That ball just got so high, I believe Thomas just drifted back two or three yards to, to fill. First and ten, Auburn backed up at its own seven. Flag on the play. It was Auburn... Did Auburn draw East Carolina offside? I sure did, Andy. That's a that's a play in Terry Bowden's playbook. Auburn uh, sometimes will use that on first down. Offsides, defense, high yard penalty, first down. Quarterback handles the cadence, draws the team offsides, and the center snaps the ball. Auburn 
and isn't quite as close to the shadow of the goal line now. Out to the 12. First and five. Nick's under center. Hand off to the fullback for the first time today, Joe Frazier. John Krejcik out of Oglesby, Illinois, makes the stop on the play. And it's a gain of three on the play, bringing up second down and two for the Tigers. Clock is moving, 11.46 to go in the third quarter. Auburn leads East Carolina on homecoming at Jordan-Hare Stadium, 20-14. to 14. I'm Andy Bertram, Randy Campbell alongside Brian Bailey on the sidelines. Pitch to Davis with some room, 20. Bulls ahead to the 28-yard line. Morris Foreman came up to make the final stop. But Stephen Davis took Morris or took Mark Marvin Burke for a ride. Tall sweep. Stephen Davis shows his ability and power right here. He must be uh, really scary if you're in the secondary at East Carolina. See him coming up the field with 230 some odd pounds. 13-yard gain for Stephen Davis from the 28. Here comes the blitz. Davis again. Cuts it up to the 30 and across the 30 to the 33. David Hart and Marvin Burke make the stop for the Pirates. Four-yard gain for Stephen Davis. Second down and six. And we may see Auburn try and grind some clock here and try and move the ball up the field with big number 48. It looks like that's exactly what's happening, Andy. Auburn would like to use that clock and establish a running game. Morrow, the fullback. Davis, the tailback. East Carolina blames the blitz. Davis cuts it up across the 35. To about the 37, John Krejcik leading a surge of pirate tacklers on the play. East Carolina blitzing again against the top sweep. You can see here, a lot of times, if, if you have one good kickout block on the top sweep against a blitz, it'll bust for a big play. Mark Liviano trying to strip the ball away from Stephen Davis, who had had none of that. Third and two for Auburn. Auburn two of six on third downs in the first half. Davis stacked up at the line and he didn't make it. Mark Liviano made the stop. A crunching block by Mark Liviano out of Easton, Pennsylvania. Easy to see why this guy is the leading tackler for the Pirates. Right here in short yardage, you'd like to see Stephen Davis, instead of putting on the brakes and turning his shoulder, you'd like to see him get low and behind his pads and try to run through somebody to gain those extra two yards. Morris Foreman to receive this Terry Daniel punt from the 23. Nowhere to go, he makes it out to the 25 yard line. Let's go downstairs. There's an injury update with Brian Bailey. Brian? Okay, the injury situation for Auburn reads as follows. Alonzo Etheridge out for the game with bruised ribs. Eric Rebel is also out for the game with a bruised shin. Brian Robinson still may play with a jammed left hand. Ken Alvarez has a bruised side. And Daryl Riggins with a bruised shoulder. Those players should play. But as far as we know, Etheridge and Rebels are out for this game. Thank you, Dr. Bailey, for that medical report. Terry Biden talked about that coming out of the locker room at halftime, the injuries. First and 10 at the 25 for East Carolina. Shuttle pass to Junior Smith to the 31-yard line. Shannon Suttle makes the stop for Auburn. See Shuttle get upfield to go for the quarterback, reacts well, comes back and makes the play from behind. Ryan Robinson trying to fight off a blocker there. Terry Tillman at six foot six leveling the six three Brian Robinson. Second and four, again of six. Pass complete. This is Galloway near midfield. 
Chris Schelling makes the stop on Mitchell Galloway, a gain of 19 and a first down for the Pirates. Andy, I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, you got a missed tackle. Fred Smith, who's usually a, usually a sure tackler, right there to make the play for a three or four yard gain, ends up missing the play and uh, missing the tackle, and that turns into a big play for East Carolina. From the 49 on first and 10, Crandall straight back across the middle, intercepted. Robinson to midfield. Inside the 45, Brian Robinson for Auburn. He had three interceptions against Florida three weeks ago. And once again, the interception dooms East Carolina's offense. Crandall throwing down the middle of the field. Brian Robinson coming. He must not have seen him from the other side of the field. Broke on uh, Crandall's eyes. Saw the ball. Picked it off. Three interceptions today for Auburn's defensive secondary. First and ten from the East Carolina 44. Fred Beasley checks in at tailback. Back, Nix. Goes long for Sanders. Open at the five. Touchdown! the jugular after the interception. You make a mistake against Auburn, Coach Terry Bowden is going to try to take advantage of it. Patrick Nix back. Frank Sanders beats his man inside on the post. It's a perfect pass. <laughs> right on the money for the touchdown. Big play for Auburn right after the turnover. An injured player is Emmanuel McDaniel. He was the defender on the play. The second touchdown pass of the day for Frank Sanders. And Auburn, for a moment, ran Patrick Nix back on the field like it may go for two. And he comes to the sideline to talk with Terry Bowden. So the Tigers may try and tack on two more points, and I think they will. Now up 26 to 14. Nix to Sanders. 44 yards, and it was perfect. Randy Campbell. Again, here's another another angle. Patrick Nix throwing the ball. Emmanuel McDaniel is uh, East Carolina's best defensive back. He's got five interceptions this year. That, if he is hurt uh, on this play, that'd be a big loss for East Carolina's secondary. Frank Sanders, again, doing an excellent job of getting inside their best defensive back. McDaniel walking off the field under his own power, and that's good news. And Auburn, indeed... will go for two here. Trying to make it a 14-point lead now. Dual wide receivers right. Beasley, the lone back. Nicks to pass. Throws to Beasley. He's going to score. Great timing by Patrick Nix. He throws everyone, and Beasley was wide open in the flat. Patrick did a great job looking all the looking off all the defenders. He's looking down the middle, knows he's got an outlet if no one's open in the middle. Hits Fred Beasley late to the sideline. Excellent play by Patrick Nix. And Nix didn't tip it off at all, did he? He sure didn't. He looked down the middle, tried to draw the East Carolina defense to the center of the end zone. Fred Beasley, highly touted freshman touchdown. And this sets up the touchdown. Another interception by Brian Robinson. And is this guy putting himself in position for some postseason honors? He's already Auburn's career leader for interceptions returned for touchdowns. And that there set up a one-play drive, and it took all of seven seconds for Patrick Nix to hit Frank Sanders on a 44-yard post pattern and touchdown. The two-point conversion tacked on, and Auburn leads 28-14 to with seven minutes and 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Matt Hawkins to kick off. Mitchell Galloway deep to receive for East Carolina. has kicked it close enough to the sideline that Galloway has let it go and instead has bounced into the end zone. First and 10, East Carolina at its own 20. 
Just a perfect kick, and you know this may be the best uh, Auburn's kicking game has looked all around this this year. Uh, field goals, kickoffs, punt returns, coverage, coverage. I mean they've looked excellent in every phase of the kicking game. First and ten, East Carolina at its own twenty, and now the Pirates trail by two touchdowns. From the eye, Marcus Crandall. The tailback, Jarris McPhail on the run. Walker and Harris on the stop. Harris and Walker, Andre Miller in on the stop for Auburn. A seven-yard gain for Jarris McPhail. McPhail out of Clinton, North Carolina. A couple of touchdowns rushing this season. Excuse me, it was a gain of three, second and seven. Crandall to Galloway. Hit immediately. Dell McGee with the stop. A gain to the 27-yard line. Good pursuit and coverage that time by Del McGee out of Columbus, Georgia. It really was, Andy. A good throw and catch by East Carolina. Del McGee right there. He wraps up two arms around him. Not going to miss that tackle. So it's third down and three now for East Carolina. From the 27. The Auburn faithful making some noise at Jordan Hare. Crandall straight back. Pressure throws. Incomplete. Intended on the play for Damon Wilson, Chris Schelling, number four against number four with the defense and Mike Pelton with pressure on Crandall. And East Carolina will punt it away. Matt Levine. Pretty good day for Matt. He's averaging nearly 43 yards per punt this season. Thomas Bailey at his own 34. Nice punt. Bailey at the 26. To the sideline with the block. Dives across the 40 and out of bounds at the 41. So good field position for Auburn as we head downstairs to Brian Bailey. Okay, the injury situation for East Carolina is not quite as serious. Emmanuel McDaniel was hurt on the Auburn touchdown and the wind is knocked out of him. And Morris Foreman suffering a little bit with a bruised shin. Other than that, that's the uh, power situation as far as injuries go. A little bit better than Auburn's, but not on the scoreboard. 28-14 Auburn, six minutes to go in the third quarter. Auburn going for its 20th consecutive victory. Nice day for Pat Nix. No interceptions. Play action. Nix straight back. Looking long again for Sanders. Caught by Sanders at the 19. Oh, Lee Mackerel. Frank Sanders is being looked at by the pros. A 41-yard gain, and that pass right there is one of the reasons. Frank Sanders just has excellent ability. Patrick Nix threw the ball up and just gave him a chance to catch it. Great fake here. Patrick hides the ball well. I wouldn't say that Frank Sanders was really open. No. He's covered by two men. Patrick doesn't overthrow him and just gives Frank a chance to go up and use that great athletic ability. Great positioning as well. He was... Reminds you of the Alabama game last year. Certainly that does. From the 19 Auburn, Stephen Davis hit at the line. Spins away from one... But not Mark Liviano and Daniel Russ. Liviano is everywhere for East Carolina. Stephen Davis with the ball. Missed tackle there by East Carolina. Ran into Jason Taylor. After the game, don't forget, the locker room report, Charlie Trotman talks with players and Coach Bowden, and then the first Alabama Bank scoreboard show with Paul Ellen. On second and 13, Knicks to Sanders. Excuse me, that is Willie Gauthier. 
Very good coverage by Emmanuel McDaniel that time. Patrick Nix just kept the ball low. You can see the play action fake. Patrick sees it, his cover just throws the ball low so the receiver can come back and get the ball. Billy Gaucher had a huge reception on that final drive at Florida. The next play, of course, Nix hit Sanders for the game-winning TD. We've got a timeout called by Auburn. Willie Gaucher is a sophomore, 6'2", 167, from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. As Pat Nix comes over to talk things over with his head coach, Terry Bowden. 19-0 at Auburn. Things always haven't been so rosy for Coach Bowden. In his first job at Salem College, he started off 0-7. His start at Auburn has been considerably better at 19-0. and 0. And Pat Nix, what a job he has done this season. There was a lot of controversy surrounding Pat. A lot of folks wondering if Damian Craig shouldn't be the quarterback here at Auburn this year. I would say Patrick Nix is pretty well silenced to that criticism. I would say so, Andy. Early in the year, first couple games, Patrick didn't look as well or as good as, uh, as he had hoped, I'm sure. Don't forget the Auburn Football Review, Phil Snow and Terry Bowden in all Alabama markets tomorrow, Sunday on Sports South at 8 o'clock Central, and then Wednesday, look forward on the Sunshine Network at 6 o'clock Eastern Time, the Auburn Football Review. Brought to you by the Auburn Network. Just to finish that comment, though, Andy, I mean, Patrick Nix against Mississippi State, Florida, Arkansas, he's played excellent uh, this second half of the year. He's a team leader, uh, does the right things, and, and I look for him to, to have a great year this year and, and a great year next year also. A big third down and three for Auburn at the East Carolina 12. Out of the shotgun, Nix to Bailey. First down to the seven-yard line. Emmanuel McDaniel makes the stop for the Pirates. Just a slant route across the middle. They sent Sanders into the end zone and brought Bailey behind. Patrick looking for Bailey on the slant. Hits him just a nice short uh, throw and catch there. Letting Thomas use his athletic ability to gain the rest of that yardage for the first down. First and goal from the six for Auburn. the tailback. Steven will run it. Gets to the corner. Touchdown! Steven Davis with his second touchdown run of the day. And he simply outran East Carolina to the corner. What happens here, Andy, East Carolina is living and dying by the blitz. They blitz inside so they don't have any pursuit. Auburn cuts them off, and Stephen Davis, again, just outrushes everybody to the corner. A six-yard touchdown run. Matt Hawkins to attempt the extra point. He is perfect on the day. And Auburn has extended its lead to 21 points, 35 to 14, and Auburn has done it in a hurry here in the second half. They really have. Uh, before the game, I was talking to a sports writer friend of mine. I won't mention his name, but he told me the score would be 42 to 14. At halftime, I would never have uh, ag agreed with him. If Auburn could get one more score and hold East Carolina to no more points, he would be right on the money. Marcus Crandall will have a lot to say about that one, friends. 35-14 Auburn. And what is Aubie doing now? He's wearing some ugly shorts is one thing he's doing. <laughs> he needs to go to the golf course with those, doesn't he? <laughs> Auburn up by three touchdowns now. Once again, Stephen Davis on the sweep. Stephen Davis shows some of his, I believe, 4-3 speed, which is hard to believe somebody 223 pounds could run that fast. Two minutes, eight seconds, five plays for the Tigers. Galloway to receive this kick by Matt Hawkins. From the six, blockers in front. Breaking through Galloway. A 
across the 40-yard line, and a flag is down. Back at the 21-yard line, a flag is down after the fine return by Travis Galloway of 35 yards. But this one may come back. That is normally in the neighborhood of an illegal block. Andy, it's a shame for East Carolina to have such a good return. And normally when you look at those blocks, holding on the return by the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Now holding this time, normally they don't even help in the play anyway. Well, Randy, I think that's the case there. That, the, that play, the flag was thrown 15 yards behind the player, Travis Galloway. Let's go downstairs with Brian Bailey. Obviously, the Pirates are in trouble right now, down 21 points. You won't see the two-minute offense right now, but as we move close to the fourth quarter, you'll see it very early as East Carolina and Marcus Crane will try to get back into this football game. Brian Bailey on our sidelines today. First and 10 from the 11. Junior Smith surges to the 19-yard line. I've been very impressed with Junior Smith today. Of course, that's a compliment to his offensive line also. They've, they've done a good job against Auburn's defensive front. Charles Booth, Jamie Gray, Ken Wiggins, Terry Tillman, and Ron Sutter. That offensive line for East Carolina. Sean Richardson, the tight end. A gain of eight, second and two. Again, Junior Smith. First down out to the 28-yard line. Chris Schelling comes up. Excuse me, Marcellus Mastella making the stop for Auburn. You can see Junior Smith's quickness here as he makes a little move right here to the outside. Makes an Auburn tackle miss and really gives second and third effort to gain two or three more yards. From the 29. Out of Prattville, a 6'4", 231-pound junior. And that, if it is an interception, and I think it is, is Auburn's fourth interception on the afternoon. Great pressure by Auburn's defensive front that time. From the 27, the Tigers trying to add to this 21-point lead. Blitz, Nix, behind Frank Sanders. Andy, that's one of the few times today Patrick Nix has been off his mark with his pass, just throwing a little bit behind Frank Sanders on that on that slam play. Frank Sanders, by the way, now over a thousand yards receiving this season. Second and ten from the 27. Play action by Nix. To Stephen Davis. Inside the 20. Darren Hart makes the stop. An eight-yard gain for Auburn. Close to a first down. Give Auburn's offensive line credit. This play took a long time to develop with uh, Stephen Davis going through the center of the line, swinging out and catching the ball. Victor Riley, Jason Taylor, Sean Robeek, Leonard Thomas, Willie Anderson providing great protection for Patrick Nix on that play. And fullback Joe Frazier, who kept Daniel Russ away from Nix. Third and two for Auburn. Davis cuts it back for a first down, I believe. It will be close. If it is, it's definitely an Auburn first down. Personal foul against East Carolina. Personal foul on the defense, half the distance penalty, first down. 
Jordan Hare. I haven't seen this in a long time here. This is conservative country. <laughs> and goal from the nine for Auburn. The fullback, Morrow, for little or no game. Mark Libiano makes the stop. And you keep waiting for that play to bust out as, as much as Auburn runs the top sweep. The coaches see some, some over-pursuing by the linebackers and they try to get that belly play to cut back. It just hasn't, they haven't run it but a couple times today and it hasn't really been very productive. 108 to go in the first half, or excuse me, the third quarter. The clock is running. Auburn leads East Carolina 35 to 14. Second and goal from the 10. Knicks to the corner of the end zone over the head of Frank Sanders. Dwight Henry defending for East Carolina. And it will be third down and 10. Good protection again that time for Patrick Nix. East Carolina just did an outstanding job of, of covering the defenders, and Patrick did a good job of throwing the ball where either we could catch it or it would go out of the end zone. Third and goal from the 10 for Auburn. Out of the shotgun with the blitz. Is incomplete. Emmanuel McDaniel thought he had an interception. The official says he was on the end line. Looked like it's just going to be a three step fade route. And Patrick throws the ball in the corner of the end zone. Thomas Bailey, you can't see him on, on the picture here, but he, he got held up a little bit at the line of scrimmage. Uh. He couldn't get back there. The first thing down was his hand that was on the end line from that angle. Looks like it's a pretty good call. Yeah, had, had his knee hit first, he would have been inbounds for an interception. That's right. So Matt Hawkins on to attempt a field goal out of the hold of Patrick Sullivan, and it's good. From 26 yards, Hawkins perfect on the day in his field goals and his extra points. And the Tigers have tacked on two more. 38 to 14. <laughs> it's pay-per-view. We can show just about anything we like. <laughs> I wonder who that was for. Auburn fans, you know. been fun for the Auburn faithful today. A big crowd on hand at Jordan Air Stadium. And with 38 seconds to go in the third quarter, their Tigers lead East Carolina 38 to 14. An 18 point third quarter for the Tigers who have shut out East Carolina here in the third. Two interceptions have played very big parts in two of those Auburn scores. Auburn's looking obviously much better on defense this second half. Hawkins to kick off, Galloway to receive. From the goal line. Upended at the 23. As we go downstairs to Brian Bailey. Things went sour quickly for East Carolina over on the Pirates sideline right now. The coach is just trying to calm the East Carolina Pirates down, telling them to try to stay cool, stay calm, try to get a touchdown or two on the board in this fourth quarter. Fourth quarter gets ready to start and see what they can go from there. All right, Brian, thank you. First and 10 from the East Carolina 22. Calm and collected on the Auburn sidelines. Crandall out of the shotgun. Going long to Williams. Open at the 35 and a first down. Del McGee defending. Crandall 
to Allen Williams for 43 yards to the Auburn 35. Crandall right on the money that time. He's had several receivers open deep today and overthrown two or three of them. You can see here, has excellent protection. Puts the ball right on the money for a nice 43-yard gain. Dale McGee there to make the play. That post route's hard to defend when you're when you're running man-to-man -man with someone. Picture perfect for East Carolina at the Auburn 35. Straight back Crandall. Throws it away. As the third quarter comes to a close, that pass was intended for Jason Nichols. And at the end of three, Auburn leads East Carolina 38 to 14. As the Tigers go for their 20th consecutive victory under head coach Terry Bowden, trying to extend the nation's longest winning streak. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of rights granted to the Auburn Network, a division of Auburn Network Incorporated, and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Auburn University and Auburn Network Incorporated. Fourth quarter now, Auburn leading 38-14. to 14. Randy, what does East Carolina have to do to try and get back in this one? Well, Andy, East Carolina, against an, an Auburn defense that's playing extremely well right now, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to get to back in this football game. The thing they want to do is not get sloppy and, and have more turnovers and, and really make this thing worse than it already is. Uh, I think they you know, should just stay with the game plan that they've had, come out and try to move the football and possibly score some points. And if, if they can get a score too quickly, maybe then go to a hurry-up offense and try to get you know really back into the game. Don't forget, Charlie Trotman talks things over with Coach Bowden on the locker room report on the Auburn radio network. Right after that, first Alabama Bank scoreboard show with Paul Allen on your Auburn network affiliate. Out of the shotgun, Crandall upfield, close to a first down. Allen Williams, Otis Mounds with the stop for Auburn. This will be very close to another first down at the Auburn 25. Play picks up 10 yards and a first down. It's a 10-yard gain and a first down for the Pirates. Crandall scrambling. Finds his open receiver. Again, uh, going back to what we were talking about, East Carolina, they've just got to play turnover-free football. And then they've got to hope their defense uh, gets a turnover from Auburn, which is, with Auburn having this lead, they're not going to take too many chances in the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 25. Crandall, complete to Galloway. Roughed up at the 15-yard line by Fred Smith and Dell McGee. From the ground level. You see Marcus Crandall very composed, has time. East Carolina going back to the short passing game. Mitchell Galloway, one of their leading receivers. Nice catch and run. Galloway's a bit hurt. He's off the field. From the 14, first and 10. Crandall. Complete to Jarris McPhail. Brian Robinson with a hit along the sidelines. It's a gain of five on the play. At the Auburn nine-yard line. McPhail out. Junior Smith back in at tailback for the Pirates. This camera guy. Ouch. There's a pass into the end zone for Shannon. Broken up at the last minute by Otis Mounds. Is he okay? Is our camera guy okay down there? I'm glad to hear that. He's okay, I guess. He took a tumble. There's hazard pay involved in this, I guess. From his angle, right into your living room. Oh, oh man. Third and five after the great play from Otis Mounds. From the nine. To McPhail. And 
incomplete. Otis Mounds one more time. That pass intended for Derek Batson, my mistake. No mistake made by Otis Mounds on that play, however. And it's fourth and five, and Chad Oakham will come on for a field goal attempt. East Carolina right here opting to kick the field goal just to have something positive happen and put a few points on the board. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're thinking about winning this game, you, you think they might go for the touchdown. Don't instead. rule out the fake. That's true. That is true. The holder is Ed Crabtree. Flag on the play, and they were going to fake it. That snap was to Holcomb, who has thrown two touchdown passes already this year. Wow, everything going wrong for East Carolina on the play. A flag down. And then they tip their hand Delay. by going ahead and showing. On the offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. They tip their hand by showing that they were going to fake it. Wow. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Steve Logan now, I don't know if he's telling the truth, but he's, he's motioning with his foot for them to go ahead and kick it, but they, they may still fake it. A 31-yard attempt, we think. That's the fifth penalty for East Carolina in the second half. The Tiger defense holds. Boy, you have to go back to two terrific plays from Otis Mounds on that drive. And he just took this one. And it's not very close, is it? When it rains, it pours, Andy. He had the sharp angle kicking from the right hash mark, and he hooked it too much. And so it's Auburn first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. Tyrone Goodson comes in and Thomas Bailey comes out. 13-32 remaining in the game. On homecoming at Auburn, the Tigers lead East Carolina 38-14. Patrick Nix under center. Backs in the eye. Stephen Davis. Open field. Head down across the 30 to the 31. Marvin Burke in on the stop for East Carolina. After the game, you will be able to view the post-game interviews for both coaches. Steve Logan for East Carolina and Auburn's Terry Bowden. A bonus that we bring you right here on the Auburn Network. Both coaches after the game in their post-game interviews. So stay tuned after the game. First and 10, Auburn at its own 30. A 10-yard gain for Stephen Davis. Starting to pile up the yardage. The pitch to Davis. Good block. Cut back. Across the 35. Near the 40. Marvin Burke, Dwight Henry. The stop for East Carolina. A nine-yard gain for Stephen Davis. Auburn's favorite running play again. The toss sweep. Stephen Davis almost makes it look easy. He's, he's had a great help today by the fullback and the offensive line running that play. Second and one for Auburn at the 39. The fullback for the first down for Auburn. Harold Morrow with the carry. Four yards, six foot, 204. He's a junior from Maplesville. Another first down for Auburn. Andy, Auburn's starting to substitute more players now as it gets later in the fourth quarter with this lead. Stephen Davis just came out of the game. Fred Beasley is in. On first down, the blitz. Nix. Complete to Thomas Bailey. Inside East Carolina territory, David Hart could only watch as Bailey made the diving catch. Really a great catch by Thomas Bailey. The ball was thrown 
outside. As you can see here, the, the play action fake. Patrick does a good job of getting rid of the ball. Uh, quickly gets it to the sideline low, and Thomas Bailey with a great catch there. Bang, bang play along the sideline. Tough call for the official, but a nine-yard gain for Bailey. Second and one at the East Carolina 49. Nicks for the first down. Behind his center, Shannon Robeek and guards Jason Taylor and Leonard Thomas. Alfonso Collins from Thomasville, Georgia. Excuse me, Thompson, Georgia, to make the stop. Auburn's offensive line with a huge surge that time. Mississippi State by 10 over Arkansas. That is a final. Florida big over Southern Mississippi at the Swamp. Vanderbilt continues Kentucky's woes in Lexington. And Ole Miss leads Memphis. And Oxford. From the 47, pitch to Davis. Cut back, head down at the 45. Mark Lebiano making the stop. Jason. Florida State by 24 over Georgia Tech. In the fourth. Numbers for Stephen Davis on the day. A couple touchdowns. 23 carries. Davis nearing that 1,000-yard mark on the season. Dwight Henry making the stop for East Carolina. Beasley is the heir apparent to Stephen Davis in a couple of years. Tall sweep to Stephen Davis. Has Joe Frazier out making a key block again. Fred Beasley showing his power with a few extra yards after he's hit. Boy, not enough credit can be given to Joe Frazier, the fullback. That's he true. Is a terrific blocker. He, he's a key to Auburn's best offensive player, the toss sweep. Do you think East Carolina was going to blitz? I think they were, Andy. Auburn had their, uh, they don't really call this a trick play. It's part of their offense. And it normally works for five plays. Dead ball foul, illegal contact by the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Like right now. East Carolina thought it could stay with Auburn through the first half, but was a little afraid of the third quarter, and they had good reason to be. 38-14 Tigers. Beasley around the right side. Picks his way inside the 25 near a first down where Dwight Henry makes the stop. Mark Leviano also there for the Pirates. The third quarter was really the bugaboo for East Carolina last year. They had really improved in that statistic this year. Coming out after halftime and really giving up the big play. They gave up the big play in the third quarter this afternoon. They did, Andy. Uh, Joe Frazier, another key block, spun his man all the way around on that last toss sweep. Harold Moss come in for him. Joe's getting a much-deserved rest now on the sideline. You know, Auburn last year had Reed McMillan as they measure for the first down, and it's very, very short. Reed McMillan and Tony Richardson last year were the kind of fullbacks that Terry Bowden likes. Terrific blockers, able to catch the ball, and team leaders. Joe Frazier is the same this year. He's an outstanding blocker, perhaps better than Reed McMillan and Tony Richardson, and a great team leader. Joe, Joe's got that defensive mentality from being a nose guard in high school. He's a real tough individual. Steve Logan looks on. It's the Auburn faithful. Trade the Auburn Tiger cheer across Jordan Air Stadium. Second and one for the Tigers at the 24. Auburn trying to put the lid on this one. The pitch to Fred Beasley. Cuts it inside the 20. 
20 down to the 18-yard line where Dwight Henry is there to make the stop. A six-yard gain for Fred Beasley, a true freshman from Lee High School in Montgomery. Fred, of course, this past spring tore up his knee playing basketball. And Auburn fans were concerned. Beasley was the number one recruit in the state of Alabama when he came out of high school. You can see why. He, he looks, uh, he's a different style runner than Stephen Davis. Patrick Nix checks off at the line. Beasley fumbles. And East Carolina has it, I do believe. Yes, they do. Lorenzo West out of Atlanta, Georgia with the fumble recovery. Auburn's first turnover, if I'm not mistaken, on the afternoon. Uh, you can see here, um, Fred Beasley just takes his eye off the ball. He started downhill real quick because of East Carolina's pursuit upfield on the corner. Lorenzo West recovering the fumble for East Carolina. Yeah, you can credit part of that fumble to the surge of the East Carolina defensive line. So the Pirates trying to take advantage of Auburn's first turnover from their own 22. The pitch to McPhail. Upended by Otis Mounds after a gain of five on the play. Make that a gain of four. 8-24 and counting. Auburn leads East Carolina 38-14. Tigers ranked third in the country in the Associated Press poll. Second down and six. Pitch to McPhail with some room. Cuts it off field across the 35-yard line. Otis Mounds, Chris Schelling there to make the stop. And you can hear the pop on that play. McPhail a little slow to get up, and boy, you'll see why here. You can see the toss by Crandall. Sean Richardson, number 88, makes a key block on Willie Whitehead on the outside, which enables McPhail to turn upfield and gain a, a nice yardage for the first down. From the 36, McPhail again. Across the 40 to the 41. Actually, Junior Smith with the carry. Willie Whitehead out of Tuskegee with the stop. 51 tackles coming into this season. A former walk-on at Auburn. Take a look at Marcus Crandall. Just a sophomore. Last play, you can see the trap block on Willie Whitehead. He plays off the block real well, makes the play for a short game. Good block and a good play by Willie Whitehead. Second down out of the shotgun. Junior Smith on the handoff by Schelling. Junior Smith carries to the 49-yard line. Brian Robinson, Anthony Harris, Shannon Suttle all there for Auburn. Marcellus Mostella. Big game for Smith, though, and it's first down for East Carolina at its own 14-yard line. Another 100-yard game for Junior Smith. The draw play, Junior Smith, reminds me a little bit of uh, Lionel James. Uh, he was about 5'6", 175 pounds. Both of them low to the ground, extremely quick. Sometimes they get lost behind those blocks. First and 10 from the 49. Junior Smith cuts it back and down. Scott Stacy, Mike Pelton putting the shoulder pad to Junior Smith. Pelton low, Stacy high, and Stacy is slow to get up. Scott Stacy, who made the tackle along with Mike Pelton on that play, slow to get up. Let's take a look at this hit by Scott Stacy. It's hard to tell from the from the camera what he what he hurt, but pretty solid hit, wasn't it? Pelton was also hurt. Both tacklers on that play were hurt. Junior Smith stays in the game. A gain of one. Second down for the Pirates. Smith again. Nice one-on-one -on -one tackle from Anthony Harris. Auburn's leading tackler coming into this afternoon's game. Made a shoestring tackle on Junior Smith. 
Andy, we talked earlier about Auburn having all their offensive linemen returning next year. They aren't as fortunate on defense. All four of their defensive starters, Whitehead, Pelton, Walker, and Etheridge, are all seniors. They'll be hard to replace. Certainly will. Third down, a big third down for East Carolina with 5.38 to go in the game, trailing by 21. Randall hands to Smith on the draw. First down and more inside the 40-yard line. Chris Schelling makes this stop for Auburn, but not after, or not before, rather. Junior Smith gains a first down for East Carolina. From the end zone. East Carolina now abandoning their passing game the last five or six plays. The draw play to Junior Smith, and is he exciting to watch or what? Good block that time by Ken Carroll, the left tackle. Smith over 3,500 yards in his career now at East Carolina. From the 38, Junior Smith. Still on his feet down inside the 30, near the 25-yard line. A host of Tiger tacklers there. Marcellus Mostella, Anthony Harris. Brian Robinson among those to make the stop. So you couldn't tell by East Carolina. You couldn't tell that they were behind by 24 points with the effort they're giving with only four minutes and 53 seconds left in the game. Junior Smith running hard second and third effort. Doing an outstanding job. Another big day for Junior Smith, 140 yards. From the 26, McPhail. Upended by Fred Smith at the 20. Marcellus Mostella also in on the stop for the Tigers. A seven-yard game. Little slant play here to McPhail. Fred Smith there to make the hit. Auburn's defense need to tighten up a little bit. They, they seem like they may be getting a little tired. Uh, East Carolina's run the ball right at them about six plays in a row. Just over four minutes to go. Auburn by 21 over East Carolina. McPhail again. Stood up at the line. And perhaps a loss on the play. Big hit that time by Chris Schelling as we go downstairs to Brian Bailey. Pirates trying to make this one a little bit more respectable with this uh, late score. Hopefully this late score as far as East Carolina is concerned. Pirates still have the Liberty Bowl as far as, as down the road is concerned for East Carolina. They still have hopes for that Liberty Bowl spot as a part of the Liberty Bowl alliance. You know, I voted in the AP basketball poll last year. I'm not an AP football voter, but if I was an AP football voter, the number one team in the country is right here at Auburn, I think. Brian, you've got a lot of folks that would agree with you watching today's broadcast or telecast. Third and three from the 19. McPhail. First down. Inside the five. Chris Schelling making the touchdown saving tackle on Jarris McPhail. A 17-yard gain. McPhail with great vision. Cuts it back here against the grain. Finds a hole. Offensive line doing a good job. And Auburn obviously pursuing the ball well for McPhail to cut back. Nice uh, touchdown saving tackle there by Chris Shelley. McPhail will take over next year for Junior Smith. Chris Shelley, unfortunately for Auburn, is also a senior. We've got a timeout. Auburn didn't have enough players on the field. Jarris McPhail, if all goes to plan, will step in at that tailback spot next year for East Carolina. Don't forget, after the game on the radio network, Charlie Trotman talks with Auburn players, Coach Terry Bowden on the locker room report. Right after that, join Paul Ellen for the East for the first Alabama Bank scoreboard show. And then tomorrow, I'll catch highlights of today's game. With the Auburn Football Review in the Alabama markets tomorrow. You can check it out on Sports South Monday, 8 o'clock Central Time. And then Wednesday on the Sunshine Network at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. And there will be a few highlights to show. After the game today, don't forget, you'll have you'll be able to see both coaches in their post-game locker rooms, or post-game interviews, I should say. 
Steve Logan and Coach Terry Bowden as the interview as the press talks to both coaches. That comes your way right after the game, right here on the Auburn Network. So idea and the chance to kind of take a look inside of the post-game activities at Jordan Hare. It is first and goal for East Carolina at the Auburn two. The Pirates trying to mark for the first time in the second half. Junior Smith for the touchdown. Junior Smith with a two-yard touchdown run. And it's 38 to 20 now for Auburn leading Chad Holcomb on to attempt the extra point. Looks like a great effort by Smith. He's hitting the backfield, just refuses to go down, gets the ball over the end line. Terry Tillman taking out Jason Mos or, or Jason Misko on the play. The extra point by Holcomb is good. And Auburn's lead is trimmed to 17 with two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Andy, I think we'll see Damian Craig uh, finish this game up in relief for Patrick Nix. Patrick's had an outstanding performance, and uh, Auburn, I believe, will make some substitutions and, and get some experience for some of these younger kids. Watch the block by Tillman on Jason Miska. He created the hole for Junior Smith there. 2.44 to go in this one. We thank you for joining us on the Auburn Network today. Packed in here to Jordan-Hare Stadium. They paid good money for their seats and decided to stand instead. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed today's telecast of pay-per-view on the Auburn Network. Methodical on the ground. 12th place, 78 yards, just under six minutes elapsed time on the scoring drive for East Carolina Junior Smith with a two-yard touchdown run. for the onside. Stan Holcomb will kick it down. <laughs> Bailey back to the 10. Has a lane. It closes down, however, and he goes down at the 21-yard line. Darren Hart made the stop. It's a good job by Thomas Bailey. Auburn lined up expecting uh, an onside kick. And Bailey was able to, to get back and field the ball and get it out over the 25-yard line. Patrick Nix is done for the day. Damian Craig is in for the Tigers at quarterback. Robert Scott wide left. Backs in the eye. From the 26, pitch to Beasley. Head down across the 25. Mark Leviano making the stop. Fred Beasley with the carry. Let up into the hole by fullback Tyrone Dillard. As I mentioned before, Andy, Fred Beasley's a little different style runner than Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis sometimes looks like he's slowing down to, to look for a crease. Fred Beasley is a, more of a straight-ahead runner. He gets to the line of scrimmage extremely quick. Very good player, very good player. Second and eight for Auburn. Big pitch, Craig will run it himself with some room. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Dwight Henry made the stop, or it may have been six for Damian Craig. And that right there shows you what he brings to the table for Auburn. Sure does. You can see uh, Damian Craig with a fake here. Tyrone Dillard, the tight end, is the uh, intended receiver. He cracks back, makes a good block. Damian Craig tries to outrun uh, the ECU defense. Nice gain on the play. From the 43. 
Dillard, the tail for the fullback. Excuse me, Morrow with the carry. Stop made by Libiano. Libiano makes the stop. B.J. Crane was there as well. A minute 39 to go in this one. Don't forget, after the game, you'll be able to tune in to both of the coaches' press conferences underneath Jordan Hare Stadium. So please stand by after the game for the press conferences with Steve Logan and Terry Bowden. Craig to Beasley, right up the gut across midfield. B.J. Crane with the stop, but not before first down for Auburn. Stop made by B.J. Crane. Auburn now a minute 12 away from its 20th consecutive victory under head coach Terry Bowden. About to go to 9-0 and on the season. Playing at home against Georgia next week. That's a 6 o'clock Central Time start. Tune in for coverage on the Auburn Radio Network at 4.30 Central Time. Craig on the bootleg. Looking. Throwing deep for Jeremy Hand. Incomplete. And he got flagged down. And we may get offensive pass interference here. Actually, Hicks Poor, the Auburn receiver. And it will be defensive pass interference against David Hart. You make the call on this one. Same play. The Take the toss sweep, the naked bootleg out the back side. Damian Craig going deep. Let's see what it looks like. It's hard to tell. It looks like the Auburn uh, receiver went over the top, but it, he may have been trying to knock the ball loose. That's a tough call for the Pirates, and Steve Logan is out on the field. You can see him at the top of the screen. Screaming at the officials. He probably has a pretty good right. 41 seconds remaining. First and 10, Auburn. And Logan's still on the field. And he has just been whistled for a penalty himself. And he's still, he's going to get his money's worth on this penalty. And sportsmanlike conduct against... East Carolina. Coach Steve Logan obviously frustrated with the call. Uh, you know, from where we are, Andy, it's hard to see uh, the receiver. And Pretty lonely when you're down by 17 on the road. From the 16, Craig, in trouble, out of trouble, stumbles at the 15. Six-yard game for Damian Craig. I don't know many quarterbacks around the country that have that type of athletic ability. The He's clock back. is running down. Inside 10 seconds for the Tigers' 20th consecutive victory, their ninth of the season, and a happy homecoming at Jordan Hare Stadium. 38-21 Auburn. Terry Bowden has gone to midfield to shake hands with Steve Logan. Coach Logan refused to come to the middle of the field. He just waved at him and, and jogged off, Andy. A first half that was tight. Auburn led 20 to 14. A third quarter absolutely dominated by the Tigers, who tacked on 18 points in the third quarter and didn't give up points to East Carolina until this one was decided with 2.44 to go. Terry Bowden, 19-0. Coach in Division 1A. A remarkable, unprecedented start for Terry Bowden. 
And the alums, the students, the Auburn fans will be happy with homecoming 1994. The Tigers at home against Georgia next Saturday. Eric Zire and friends come to town. East Carolina is at home against Central Florida. And then the game that will probably decide the Liberty Bowl at Memphis on November 19th at 2 o'clock Eastern Time from the Liberty Bowl. So, Andy, East Carolina uh, hoping it plays two straight games at the Liberty Bowl this season. That's true, Andy. Um, Auburn, next week, I had a chance to see Georgia play Alabama. And believe me, that game, Georgia, for three and a half quarters were as good as anybody that, that I've seen this year. Alabama came back in the last minute of the game and, and won the game by one point. Georgia's been uh, kind of up and down, mostly probably down this year, even though their record, I believe, is 5-4. and four. But I think that any time Eric Zier walks on the football field, he gives his, chance, his team a chance to win the football game. My wife, Nancy, is a Georgia graduate, so it'll be an interesting contest for us to sit side by side at that game and cheer for our respective schools. 6 o'clock at Jordan-Hare Stadium. That's a central time start. 6 o'clock next week. The Tigers at home against Georgia. The final home game for Auburn this season. The final home game for seniors like Chris Schelling and Frank Sanders and Thomas Bailey. So those guys play their final home game against the Georgia Bulldogs. 6 o'clock next week. Radio coverage. Exclusive radio coverage on the Auburn Network at 4.30 central time. Next week, next Saturday, and then, of course, Auburn closes out the season at Alabama on November 19th in a game that very well could match two unbeaten teams going into that game. It could, Andy. Uh, Alabama plays LSU tonight, uh, I believe, in Baton Rouge, and they play Mississippi State uh, next week in Starkville. It, it would be a very, very exciting contest, uh, even more than usual if both teams were to end up 10-0 going into that last game of the year. As if that game needed any more hype. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that game sometimes seems like it's too big. It will be big regardless of the records, but the fact that it could be two undefeated teams, and you can imagine how tough it will be to get tickets if you don't already have them. Don't forget the locker room report with Charlie Trotman filling in for me, Coach Bowden and Auburn players on the Auburn Radio Network. So Charlie Trotman joins the players and coach from the locker room. The game against Memphis. If Memphis loses one of the next two games, and East Carolina can beat Memphis, regardless of what happens next week against Central Florida, then the Pirates will go to the Liberty Bowl. And that's a big, big thing to shoot for this East Carolina team, despite losing today to number three Auburn. That's a good point. We wish East Carolina good luck in his final two games of the season. We sure do, Andy. They're a, they're a very well-coached team, a very exciting team to watch. I'm sure that the uh, Liberty Bowl would be very pleased to have them come and, and represent uh, that alliance in that game. I'd like to thank Brian Bailey on the sidelines. For Randy Campbell, I'm Andy Bertram. Your final score, Auburn 38 and East Carolina 21.